see. I ain't like I can, like, I don't even know what's going on. Hey, TikTok. Okay, I'm back on TikTok. Okay, TikTok family, go back. I'm back on TikTok now. Okay, I'm back on TikTok now, y'all. I'm so sorry. My iPhone just like randomly went dead. I don't even know what happened, y'all. It just like randomly went dead, literally. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Lord, 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 Lord. Okay, some people are seeing it. Hey, y'all, I'm so sorry. They kicked me off. Uh, not they kicked me off. My iPhone went dead randomly. I don't even know why my iPhone went dead, y'all. I don't know what's going on, but my iPhone just, like, randomly went dead, y'all. So, I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm so, so sorry. I had, like, over 200 and some people watching me. So, I'm like, are you serious? I know, y'all. God says, I'm about to see radical blessings today, y'all. We're going to prophesy over our lives. We're going to see radical blessings today because I know that this is not happening by any old circumstance. But you know what, God? I thank you, God, that you're taking what the enemy meant for evil and you're turning it around for my good, Father God. God, I say right now what the enemy meant for evil, what the enemy meant to try to stop, I say he will not stop what God is doing because the healing power of God is going to go forward. No. I don't need an Android. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it. I don't want no Android. I rebuke it, Misha. But y'all, let's get back into this good word today. Okay. I hate that I don't have music, but you know what? I don't need music to be anointed. Come on, somebody. I don't need music to be anointed. I don't need music to be anointed. We're going to preach this word and it's going to go forth. Okay. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 14. Then he went down. And dipped himself seven times in the Jordan. See, he had to humble himself. He had to be willing to humble himself and be obedient to the word of God. See that he had to be willing to humble himself and be obedient to the word that God gave him. Because if he was not going to humble himself, then he was going to miss out what God had for him. And you got to be willing to be humble and allow God to heal you in the way that God wants to heal you. See, God has his way of doing things. See, God will do things in a way that will expose your heart to you. And see, God had to expose Naaman his heart to him in order for God to heal him. Because if Naaman would have never been able to see his heart posture had pride in it, he would have missed his healing. Don't miss your healing because of pride. See, some of you are so caught up in needing to control everything. Do not allow your control issue to cause you to miss your miracle. Because he almost missed his miracle because of his control issue. I want to, I'm going to restart this phone of mine, y'all. He almost missed his miracle because of a control issue. And some of you, God has told you to do certain things. God has told you to sow seeds for it. God has told you to do. God has told you to pray. God has told you to fast. God has told you, okay, I want you to fast seven days. Okay, God, I'll do three. God told you to sow a hundred dollar seed. Okay, God, I'll do 20. God has told you to start. Okay, can I be real? This is this is some too. God is showing me. God has told you some of you to start coming to these lives. God has already spoken to some of you to connect with Takaya Revelo Ministries, but you've been putting it off. It's disobedience. I truly believe this, that everybody connected to this ministry. I've seen it and I can testify of it. I don't say it because it's me. You could take me out of the equation. My husband could literally be the one over this ministry. It don't make a difference. Literally. I, it don't matter if it's me, my husband, it, destiny, it could be destiny's ministry. At the end of the day, God told you to do something. Stop putting off what God told you to do. Some of you, the reason why you ain't got the victory that you want, because you keep putting off what God told you to do. 
The Bible says to know what to do and not do it is sin. Some of you are literally in sin right now just because you won't go do what God told you to do. The Bible says to know what to do and not do it is sin. Do not cause your own self to sin because you won't do what God told you to do. God has been putting it on your heart. I don't know who this is for, but somebody needs to hear this. I'm trying to get my devices. God has been putting it on your heart. Write it in the comments, Brooke. We want, we all want to know this testimony. God has been putting it on your heart to connect with this ministry. But some of you have been putting it off and putting it off. Oh, God, I'll do it this day. God, I'll do it that day. Some of you, God has already told you to join the mentorship. But now I'll, put, I'll do it this way. I'll do it this way. I, I'll do it this day. Oh, God, I'll do it that day. Oh, God, I'll do it that day. The Bible says to know what to do and not do it is sin. Do not cause disobedience to cause you to sin. God has already told you what to do. And you over here, oh, well, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. Some of you don't need to, some of you don't need to pray. Some of you need to do it. Because one ounce of obedience will do more for you than a lifetime of prayer. Because listen, prayer without obedience ain't going to get you nowhere. Prayer without obedience is not going to get you anywhere. Faith without works is dead. If you truly have faith in God the way you say you do, why are you not moving? Come on, let's deal with the issue now. Come on, let's go ahead and deal with this issue. Why are you being disobedient? Why are you not doing what God told you to do? Why are you allowing fear to keep you from doing what God called you to do? Because the Bible says to know what to do and not do it is sin. Because some of you, you're waiting. Oh, mm, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, the Lord always gives me scripture for what I need when I need it. There's this scripture in Ecclesiastes. It's so good. You feel unworthy. God told you, V, I'm going to have you step right in, right on the point where she's going to step all on your toes. Right? Okay. Ecclesiastes, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4. I'm going to show you something. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4. It says, he who observes the winds. Come on, somebody who's observing the wind. He who observes the wind and waits for all conditions to be favorable. Y'all ever heard that say, oh, I'm going to do it uh, when I got it all together. Oh, I'm going to do it on this day. I'm going to do it this day. And I'm going to do it that day. And I'm going to wait on this day. And when, when I get it together, then I'm going to do it. Oh, when I get her, then I'm going to do it. Oh, when I have the money, I'm going to do it. Oh, when I got it all together. Mm -hmm. Y'all ever heard that? Y'all ever heard that saying? Mm -hmm. He who observes the winds and waits for all conditions to be favorable will not sow. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. He who is waiting for all conditions to be favorable will not sow. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. You cannot reap if you never sow. So when you're sitting there saying, oh, when it's this, I'll do it. God, when it's this, I'll do it. Ah, oh, when it, this happens, I'll do it. Oh, when that happens, I'll do it. You realize that that right there is a tool the enemy uses to keep you from ever getting your breakthrough.
and, and I want to read some to you. It says, as you know, not what is the way of the wind or how the spirit comes to the bones in the womb of a pregnant woman. Even so, you know, not the work of God who does all in the morning. Listen what it says in the morning. sow your seed and in the evening withhold not your hands for, you know, not which shall prosper, whether this or that or whether both alike will be good. There's your scripture. Okay, well, prophetess, the Bible says that we don't got to sow a seed. He says, in the morning, sow your seed, and in the evening, withheld not your hands, for you know not which will prosper. You don't know if it's going to be the work of your hands or it's going to be the seed that you put in the ground. So God says, you need to have the work of your hands and the seed that you put in the ground because you don't know which one is going to be the one to prosper. So it's better for you to do both. It's better for you to do birth. Come on. He says, you know which not which shall prosper, whether this or that, or whether both alike will be good. See, procrastination will keep you from your own breakthrough. Lack of knowledge will keep you from a breakthrough. When God tells you to sow something, do it. When God tells you to go and do something, start something with your, your hands, right? We talking about your hands. When God tells you to start a business, do it. When God tells you to do something, do it. Why? Because you never know which one God going to prosper first. So you do best to have the seed and the ground and to have the work of your hands too. Because you don't know if God going to bless the business to be, to be the thing or if God's going to spring up that seed. You don't know if it's going to be the seed that's going to come back first or if it's going to be seed. Bible talks about Isaac, how Isaac went and sowed seed. God, he went and sowed seed and he put crops in the field, right? And he said in that year he got a hundredfold but it also talked about how he was also blessed in the work of his hands too and in what he had so being that you don't know if God's gonna do it in the seed or if God's gonna do it in the work of your hands you would do best to have both of them actively working because when you have seed in the ground and you also have the work of your hands you give God more room to give you your blessing see you gotta have seed in the ground. Why do you need seed in the ground? Because listen, you cannot withdraw from a well you ain't never put in on. Can I be real with you? I can go to PNC Bank. Come on. It's people getting uh, financial testimonies. Come on, look at God. Listen, I can go to PNC Bank all day. And be like, I got an account with you. Great, you got an account with me. Let me see if you got some in it. See, so many times we want to try to make withdrawals from a place we never deposited in. So God says, I need for you to have deposits from the work of your hands. And I also need to have deposits. I need you also to have deposits in the ground too. I need for you to also be putting seeds in the ground as well. Because you never know which account I'm going to use. Oh, that's good, God. You never know which account that God is going to bring your breakthrough out of. So at best you have multiple accounts because you never know which one God is going to use. See, listen. Oh, God, you just shifted my message to a whole place. I wasn't even going. Now we getting, okay. I'll be honest with y'all. The message started off a little slow, but we starting to pick up now. I was like, okay, God, well, where are we taking this thing? Because uh, it, 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 it's like, you know, like, y'all, miracles, miracle money, miracle provision. Okay, that's your revelation. Where is the inscription note? Ooh. I know. See, if my phone... Oh, I can get my phone, y'all. Hold on. I 
I always tell people, listen, I preach what I believe. This is, that's what I believe. I've seen it happen, right? You know what I mean? Like, that's me. But if you don't believe it, yeah. Okay, here it is. Okay, listen. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 verse 24 right it says there are those who generously scatter abroad it says there are those who scatter abroad and yet increase more so the one who scatters abroad is the one who increases more and then it says and there are those who withhold more than is fitting and what is justly due but it results only in want God says, when you hold more back than what is justly due, you leave your own self and want. So God says, there are those who generously scatter abroad, right? And yet increase more. So the one who scatters abroad, they are the ones who increase more. But the one who withholds more than is fitting or what is justly due. So the one who's being disobedient and not doing what God says to do. God says, that's the one that I leave in want. So how do I get to the point where I'm no longer left in want? I learn how to scatter abroad and be faithful in my giving. Be faithful in doing what God tells me to do. So when God tells me to do something, I do it. When God tells me to sow, I don't ask questions, I do it. When God tells me to go and be a blessing to somebody, I go and be a blessing to somebody. See, listen. When God tells me to buy somebody groceries, I'm going to buy them groceries. You know why I'm going to buy them groceries? Because you never know when you may need groceries. And the Bible says that if you ignore the cry of the poor, then God says, I will ignore you. You never know when you're going to need a breakthrough. But here's the thing about it too. You also got to be intentional in your giving. Why? Because some of you give, but you don't give in the way God is calling you to give. You give out of your, you feel like you're obligated to be everybody's financial bank. God ain't called you to be everybody's bank. No, God called you to use it with wisdom. So when God tells you to give, you give, but God is not calling you to give to everybody. Yeah. Hold on, y'all. Okay, I had to take care of something. I had to block something. Yeah. And here's the thing. So then it says this. Now, okay. So back to what I was saying. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24. It says, there are those who generously scatter abroad and yet increase 
all the more. There are those who withhold more than is fitting and what is justly due, but it results only in want. God says, when we withhold what is justly due, when we withhold from what God is telling us to do, that leaves us in want. But God says, when you are obedient to scatter abroad and be a giver, be generous, be loving. When God says, when you are willing to do that, I will cause you to increase all the more. But God says to the one that withholds, to the one who is stingy, to the one who is greedy, to the one who is selfish, to the one that is only me, 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 me. God says, when you do that, you leave yourself in want. That's why I had to get quiet. Because I know, I will be real enough to tell y'all that I know that I still need God to grow me concerning my attitude. And I had to get quiet with God because God knows that I was about to go off. So I shut my mouth so that way I could get my mouth to come into submission. That's why I got quiet because I needed my mouth to come into submission because my mouth was about to get. Yeah. So God had to. <laughs> and then it says oh this is good it says the liberal man shall be enriched and he who waters shall be himself enriched the people curse him who holds back grain when the public needs it but a blessing from God and man is upon the head of him who sells it It says the blessing from God and man is upon the head of him who sells it. He who diligently seeks good seeks God favor. Um, I am reading out of Proverbs 11, 24 to 27. He says, he who seeks good seeks God favor. But he who searches after evil, it shall come upon him. It says, he who leans on and trusts in and is confident in his riches shall fall, but the uncompromisingly righteous shall flourish like a green bow. Do y'all hear that? God says, Takai, I want you to go over to your favorite scripture. And y'all, if you've been with me for a long time, you already know what my favorite scripture is. <laughs> Woo, y'all know what my favorite scripture is. Anybody know what is my favorite? favorite scripture you may not know how to quote if you may not know where it is but if you can quote it yeah i'm proud of myself because okay can i be i gotta be i gotta i gotta clap for for myself for a moment nope not psalms 105 okay romans 12 yes but another one y'all gotta give a shout out to takaya because y'all don't understand that baby god shut her whole mouth you gotta let that lord get that uh get that mouth into submission Y'all don't understand. Like, I was about to. But God said, shut it. Shut it. <laughs> Second Corinthians, verse 9. Y'all see it. Y'all see y'all pass. Second Corinthians, verse 9. Let's start. Let's start at verse 1. Let's start at verse 1. We're going to start at verse one because I want to give context of the text. So that way, when I talk about the text, we already got the context. Got it. Got it. So now about the offering that is to be made for the saints, God's people in Jerusalem. It is quite superfluous that I should write you. He says, for I am well acquainted with your willingness, your readiness. It says your readiness and your eagerness to promote it. And I proudly told about you to the people of Macedonia saying that Achai, most of Greece has been prepared since last year for this contribution. Bye. For this contribution, right? So listen. 
they have been preparing since the beginning of the year for this contribution. They have been preparing last year for this offering, right? Which the Bible tells us, you know, the purpose in our own heart. And I, okay, I, I want to I wanna tell y'all something. I, I'm very aware. I can already sense there's a spirit of offense in this room. But here's the thing about this. I know there's a spirit of offense. I already know that some of you can already feel it. I know that some of you can already discern it. I know destiny can feel it because there's not a time I can feel the, the spirit of offense and things like that and things like that. So I know that people are offended, right? And I'll be honest with you. There's never going to be a time. Okay, listen. I already know that going into what I'm preaching right now, I'm going to go ahead and deal with this. Okay, let's deal with it in the house today. Okay. I know that going into what I'm preaching right now, many people are going to be offended by it. Anytime in the body of Christ, we talk about money, people are offended, right? But I'm going to be honest to tell you something. I am not going to stop preaching the word of God because somebody is offended. That's just the reality of that. Because here's the thing. The church fight money more than they fight anything else. That's just the reality is, okay? And the thing is this. We don't fight healing. We don't fight nothing else, but we fight money. And... And so I know that some of you don't like to talk about money in the body of Christ. But here's the thing about it is this. I am the kind of preacher where I'm going to talk about everything that God talks about. The Bible talks about money. The Bible says the Bible talks about money. The Bible has money in it. Things like that. And, and so, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, silver, gold was just as much money back then as it was. Denary, all those kind of things. And so like that. So while money may make you uncomfortable... And you may not want to necessarily talk about it. Here's the thing. You should probably, instead of getting mad at me, instead of seeing that maybe I'm doing something wrong, what if you checked your heart? Because a lot of times it's easy to want to say, okay, the person preaching is in the wrong. But what if it's the fact that maybe your heart posture is in the wrong? Because what we don't realize is this. God wants for his people to be blessed. God wants for you. The Bible says he wants for you to possess enough to require no aid. And, and I would, and I, and I'm going to be real with you. There was a time I felt the same way. Why? Because I was broke and I was in poverty and most people who are struggling financially. And I got to call it out because I've already walked that road. So I don't call this road out without having walked it. I been broke i've been in poverty before and i'm just gonna be honest with y'all because the reality is is everybody wants to feel good and everybody wants to not have to deal with their issues and everybody wants for somebody to just give them this and not have to deal with their issue and i'm gonna be real enough to tell you is this you are never going to be able to come out of poverty until you get very comfortable with talking about prosperity. Because the only way to eradicate poverty is through prosperity. Because prosperity is the opposite of poverty. You don't want to talk about money? Well, don't get mad when you don't have money. Because you don't want to talk about these things, but you're mad because you're struggling in these areas. You are struggling in that area and you don't want to talk about it. And the reality is, is until you are willing to talk about it, you are not going to get free from that area. If we we want to break our poverty then we got to talk about the issue in the body of Christ and it is time the body of Christ stop walking around here broke because too many believers are walking around broke asking for a handout too many believers are walking around not knowing every single month how they're gonna get their bills paid how is it that we are children of God and our bills are over here we are over here having to ask the government for a handout when we already have a government and a kingdom in God. God gave you a word. And I, I have, to, I have to say to everyone, there's a specific word for you and I, and then there's a specific word for everyone else. Well, baby, get over her because let me tell you something. I know the devil been over here fighting because, but, but we got to talk about this. So I know that there are people who are offended because I'm talking about sowing seeds. And I know people are saying, oh, that's all she wants is money. All she wants is money. You know what? I'm not. I'm going to be real enough to tell you this. If that's all you see me as is somebody who wants your money, then you're then that's you. That says more about you than it says about me. 
Because at the end of the day, I know my God and I know who I serve. And if that's what you see about me, then that's what you see. And I will be honest to say, I'm not going to spend my life trying to prove a point. And so on that light, my baby finna come over here and he gonna give us all a word. You don't know. <laughs> Woo! Come on. Are you live on TikTok and Facebook? I'm alive on TikTok and Facebook. So you gonna you gonna come sit down, baby? Yeah. Hurt. Can can we hold on? Let's just adjust it where we can put our chairs together. Okay. Hurt, well, after, after this, I gotta, I gotta go back in time. Okay, honey. But. Well, you know what, baby? You just come sit down, then. You come sit in the, the seat. Ooh. And yeah, answer some emails. Go work for the kingdom. There you go, baby. Go sit down, my love. Ooh. Okay, y'all. I don't, <laughs> I don't give uh, words like this very often, uh, but when I do, when they do happen, man, I, I, I gotta write them down. And uh, today, the Lord, he really wanted me to share this with everyone who's watching today on Facebook and TikTok. God bless you, everyone. Uh, I don't know what's been going on. It sounds like Takai's going off and somebody giving some correction. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm over here talking to God. Hey, hey, I'm like, Lord, your people, <laughs> it's your people, Lord. <laughs> so real quick before I get into the word, you know, when it, co when it comes to sewing, man, it, it's a hard posture thing, you know, uh, it's one of those things where the, the very the only reason why we've even started doing it is because the, the Lord has literally commanded us to do it. The Lord has, has, has told us to do this. And in doing so, it's allowed us to, to pour back into the kingdom in such a way that, I mean, and, and on top of that, it's not only on our part. We're seeing testimony after testimony after testimony of God blessing you guys for your faithfulness. Because you stepped out, hello everyone, because you stepped out on, on faith sowing that seed into the kingdom it's not sowing a seed into my my pocket or something like that no you're sowing a seed in faith because man i'll tell you what anyways let me get to this word so this is a word from the lord uh and like i was telling takai some of this is personal personal words for me and takai and some of the, and a lot of this is for for you guys as well okay so it says my son i am pleased with you it pleases me to hear and know you desire to go deeper with me. I will fulfill this desire. Going deeper with me is like this. Think of a deep pool. The deeper you go, the more cool and refreshing it becomes. My son, if you would go deeper with me, I will show you things that will go beyond your years. You will have such a revelation of my word and my kingdom that even educated ministers will be puzzled at how you could possibly understand it. It pleases, it pleases me to do this because you have a, such a humble attitude. I can use humble and I can exalt humility. Prepare for a big launch with the boutique. Buy more shelves and stock up on your inventory because you will sell out quickly. There's going to be times when your product will be sold out before the next shipment can come in. You will eventually need to buy more presses and, and hire staff specifically for the boutique. As you and Takaya press in deeper, I will cause overflow, and this is where it come, This is where you guys come in. As you and Takaya press in deeper, I will cause overflow and breakthrough to touch everyone connected to you. Wow. Never forget, I am the one who brought you here, and I am the one who causes you to prosper. I, the Lord, have spoken. Oh my goodness! So y'all, my encouragement to everyone here is like and share these broadcasts. This is, is li literally the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ going across the nations. L so right now, like and share this on your feed because someone needs to hear this. And y'all, I encourage y'all to partner, link arms with us uh, in what we're doing for the kingdom. Link arms with us in your, in your giving, in your serving, in your prayers. Uh, I, my encouragement is to, to not stop sending the emails. We're, we've kind of seen the emails kind of starting to slow down, but please send in your emails for prayer requests. We love doing it. We love standing in the gap for you guys. But my encouragement to everyone watching here, link arms with us in, in ministry and, and stay with us. Stay, stay with, with uh, your watching, your sharing, your, and your liking. And watch God move on your behalf in your finances, in your healing, in your mind, in that breakthrough, in that impossible mountain you're looking at. The Bible says, look into, even with a uh, uh, faith as small as a mustard seed, it says, say unto this mountain, be cast into the sea, and it shall be done. So, y'all, 
I, I bless you guys in the name of Jesus, and I, I'm, I'm, that's that's my time, y'all. I'm, I'm gonna give it back to my wife. Thank you. God bless, y'all. <laughs> my honey be running from these lies. Can you get my blanket back, sweetheart? Oh yeah. my goodness. Ooh, y'all. I received that word. Anybody else receive that word? I received that word for the boutique. That is what I have literally. I've been confessing. Y'all, I last night, if y'all missed the live, last night, y'all, I taught how to pray. I taught on how to pray last night. Come on, FedEx, delivering. Okay, so it says, and, and I wanna I wanna ask y'all for forgiveness. Forgive me, y'all, for allowing. Woohoo! Come on, partnership. Y'all. Shout out to my boo, Ariana. Ariana's on our prayer team. Yeah. Um, shout out to Adri I, No, actually, Ariana, you, you kind of connected. Ariana's a part of the church. Ariana's a part of the mentorship. Ariana's a part of the prayer team. Ariana's like, I'm just so proud of you, Ariana, because just like, I, I just want to say that publicly. I am so proud of you, Ariana, because I've just seen how Ariana has just grown. So y'all, okay. So context, Ariana is a TikTok influencer, right? And I'm just so proud of her, you know, and just being an influencer, right? And just coming on here and she's so faithful. She's always here. It's a rare thing she ever misses a live, y'all. Even through the hurricane, she's still been here. And just, you know, having her on our prayer team and just knowing like how she just, she's so teachable. She's eager to learn. She's so beautiful. If you've ever met Ariana, Ariana has like a very like sweetness to her, even like with her voice and everything. She has a really sweet voice and stuff. And I'm really, really just so thankful to have Ariana just connected with, with us and being a part of the team. And just, I just want to honor you for your faithfulness. That's one of the biggest things I really want to honor you for is just your faithfulness. So I love you, Ariana. And I just truly thank you for just being faithful and just just showing up and you know like like just I, I look at things like the fact of like you know a lot of times I'm gonna be real with y'all how influence can work a lot of times when people have more influence than you they they won't connect with you I don't know why the competition of it all, I don't know but even though like like in her having more and stuff like that she still connects with us and she still like just always is there like she don't even that's I love humble creators I love humble humble content creators because when you meet us like we really just kind of like so normal people people y'all and I just love that about her just her her just humility you know and stuff so I want to say that before everybody okay so let's get back to the word okay okay and and I'm gonna close here y'all and then we're gonna go into a time of healing okay okay um I'm gonna go let's skip down to verse six so we can go ahead and wrap this up okay it says remember this he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. And he who sows generously that blessing may come to someone will also reap generously and with blessings. See, God wants us to be givers, but not just givers for ourselves. God wants us to also be givers for looking out for other people. That we get out of our own interests and we get over into the heart of God. Because God's heart is about blessing others. God's heart is about, God told Abraham, that you will be a blessing dispensing good to others. One thing I always tell my people, it's not enough for you to be a blessing. Can I be, a, I mean, not that. It's not enough for you to be blessed. That's just the reality of it. Why? Because you were called to be blessed to be a blessing. God has, listen, anytime you pray for God to give you enough, that is not right. Well, pastor, why is it not right for God to give me enough? Because your God is the God of more than enough. If your God is a God of more than enough, why do you just ask God only for enough? And then some of you, the enemy has fooled you into thinking that you're troubling God. Oh, well, well, I don't want to ask God for too much. Can I ask you when, he, when is he going to ever run out? What is too much for God? What is too much to the person, not even person? What is too much to the God of the universe? What is too much to the God who has more than enough? What is too much to God? When does God ever run out? I just want to ask that. When does God run out? Does anybody know the answer? When does God lack? When, when does God ever run out? God never runs out. So how, how can you sit there and say, oh, well, I don't want to ask too much. 
Because if my streets are gold, then I just don't know what's too much. If I have healing, if I am the healer, when would it be too much for me to ever heal you? When does God ever run out of healing? When is God ever going to run out of healing power? The Bible says that his power has no, there is no bounds to his power. So when is God ever going to run out of healing? And TikTok, there's a chance they could kick me off again. And if it happens, we just going to go over to this iPhone again. But when is it ever going to be too much for God? When? Never. Why is it never? Because nothing is impossible with the God that we serve. Nothing is impossible with the God that we serve. And we got to trust and know that our God is faithful. That no matter what anyone says, no matter what anyone does, no matter what our situation looks like, our God is faithful. Our God is a big God. We serve a big God and I will not allow the enemy. I will not allow anyone to bring in confusion to try to make us think anything the lesser because we have a big God. Y'all, I got the devil so mad today. <laughs> so it says, and God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing, my favorite scripture, come to you in abundance. Come on. God says, I am able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. And then he says, so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient. Be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support. God says you will possess enough. To require no aid or support. What if God wants us to possess enough healing? Possess enough health. See, we normally talk about this with money, but let's talk about healing today. Come on, let's talk about healing today. And then he said, so that you may always... It's under all circumstances and whatever the need be, self-sufficient. I want to, I want to talk about something. What if we're not actually post? So okay, now y'all know. Ever since yesterday, I've been teaching y'all things that I've learned, right? And y'all know. Ever since yesterday, I've been teaching you know things that calling you out of your comfort zone. So come on, let's call out the comfort zone, okay? Let me ask you a question. What if you were never supposed to live your life always need a miracle? What if you were never supposed to live your life always need a breakthrough? Hi. What if you were supposed to live your life not always needing a miracle? What if you were supposed to live your life not always needing a breakthrough? Why do you need a miracle? Why do you need a breakthrough? If you really walked in the power and the authority and the awareness of who God called you to be and who you are in God, would you need a miracle as much as you need it now? What if you came into the awareness, right? 
that healing was already on the inside of you. Cannot the Holy Spirit heal? Cannot the Holy Spirit deliver? Cannot the Holy Spirit give breakthroughs? So what if breakthrough is already on the inside of you? What if healing was already on the inside of you? What if wealth was already on the inside of you? What if God has already given you everything that you needed in order to be who God has called you to be? You have to understand something. The Holy Spirit was present when the whole world was created, correct? The Holy Spirit was present when all of this was created, correct? So the Holy Spirit was present when the whole world was created. But you can't even get one idea just to start a business. And the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. Wouldn't it be easier to create a business than to create the whole world? The Bible says, let this mind be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus. Correct? Let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus. Correct? So you are to have the mind of Christ. Correct? How is it? That we are called to have the mind of Christ, but yet you still have the mindset of poverty. How is it that you have the mind of Christ, but yet you have you don't have one idea that could literally cause wealth to be to come into your life? The Bible says, greater is he on the inside of you than he who's in the world, correct? How is it that he who's in the world is defeating you when you have the greater one on the inside of you? How is it That you have the one who saw the foundations of the world being created. The one who was there when the whole world was created, correct? Who was there when math was came into pass? Everything that we use on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So how is it that that one who is all-knowing, you have all-knowing, this Holy Spirit on the inside of you knows everything, how is it that you have the all-knowing spirit living on the inside of you and you can't pass a test? The Bible says God has given us wisdom. How is it? The Bible says God has given us knowledge. God says any man lacks wisdom, ask God and I'll give it to you. How is it that God is giving you all of that yet you can't pass a test? How is it? I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. How is it that you have the one? You have Jesus' spirit. You have the spirit, right? The spirit that was in Jesus. You have that spirit, the Holy Spirit, living on the inside of you, right? He used that same spirit to speak to wind and call the wind to obey. He used that same spirit to speak to a fig tree and that fig tree literally died. Yet you can't even speak to your money and your money comes to you. What is money made out of? Trees listen to that spirit, correct? Did the fig tree listen to that spirit? Yes or no? Trees listen to that spirit. What is money made from? Trees, correct? Correct? 
So how is it that you can't speak to that tree and call your money? God put all of these trees around my property, around my house, right? God put all these trees around our yard, right? Just to show us that the same very thing that we use to create money is the same thing that God uses just to give you shade, just to produce oxygen. Trees are used to, pr to produce oxygen, right? Right? Do you realize? Do you realize? God uses oxygen, correct? I don't know why I'm even going here, but I don't know. God is just like, I don't know what it is, but God's taking me on a whole road right now. Okay, so we're just going to rock this road, okay? God uses trees to give off oxygen, right? And to give off shade, right? Correct, right? Okay. Man, this is really good, y'all. Because it, where it's in my mind, it's really, really good. Your money. Do you realize that money has breath in it? Money has oxygen in it. Then. God uses trees whenever they're building a, listen, do you realize what is, what is wood? This house, right? It's made from wood, correct? This house is made from wood, correct? Right? Money, houses are built from trees, right? Do you realize that this very thing that we live in every single day is the same thing that your money is made from? Then let's go to trees again. Back to these trees, right? Okay. Whenever they are building a fortress, right? They use what? Trees, correct? Okay. So they use wood, which is trees, right? To build a fortress, correct? Correct. Correct? Correct? We, we write about these trees, right? And we correct, right? I want to make sure we all on the same page, right? Okay. Then why Ecclesiastes, the Bible says money is a defense. The Bible says that money is a defense. Did you know that? Somebody said, so I need to be in a wood house. That ain't the point. The point is this. You have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. You have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. The Bible says a rich man's wealth is a strong city. God uses that thing to be a defense. We make money such a big, hard to get thing, right? Yet money comes from a thing that you can literally walk out in your yard and sit under every single day. We make wealth such a difficult thing for us, yet wealth is just coming from a thing that you literally use every single day. You burn, you use wood to make fires every single day. You use wood to build houses every single day. You use wood, literally, you use trees to sit under every single day. You make it too difficult. You have got to stop looking at it as something that is so inaccessible to you. 
just as easily as you can walk out there and touch these trees. It is the same thing. Jesus spoke to a tree. He, he literally, he said, see the, the tree. Jesus was communicating with the tree. Jesus was literally communicating with this tree, right or wrong. So how is it that you cannot communicate with your money in such a way that your money has to obey with you? How is it that you cannot communicate with your wealth in such a wealth that your wealth have to come from you? Because if your money was made from trees and Jesus could speak to a tree and when he spoke to the tree, the roots of the tree even heard him and obeyed. Then why is it that we as believers cannot speak to the very thing that our money comes from and the money has to come and obey us? Why is it that money is ruling you instead of you ruling it? The God, do you realize that God never puts nothing on his level but money? Do you realize how God put money on his level? He says, you cannot serve two masters, me and money. G money is the only thing that God would even dare put on his level. Do you know that the devil is not even on his level? The devil is not on his level. Why? Because he created it. He, money is the only thing he says you cannot serve two masters. And he says that you cannot serve me and money. So God equates money to being a master. And the only way for you to, for money to not master you is by you being a giver. Because you cannot master anything that masters you. Your money has mastered you every single month. Your money tells you what you can and cannot do. Your money tells you where you can and cannot go. Your money tells you if you can give and sow to what God is doing or not. Your money tells you if you can get this groceries for your kids or not. Your money tells you if you can go live in the house that God is give, wants you to have or not. Every single month, your money rules you. When are you going to rise up and learn how to speak to your trees and tell your trees what to do instead of your trees obeying you? You better go out there and talk to that tree, Ari. Every single month. Mm. God says, Takaya, because I'm going to be real with y'all. I was not planning on preaching on money at all today. God says, you thought this service was for healing their bodies, but it's about healing their money. There, God just, man, God just gave me, so he said, Takaya, there is an unction, there's an anointing on your life for money. There's an unction on your life for that. He said, in time, you will see the healing of it more. Like, I see healings, you know, like here and there, stuff like that. But the main thing I see is financial breakthroughs. I thought God was going to heal y'all's uh, bodies today. This is, this is about financial breakthrough today. But listen. God says, do not allow money to be your master. The only way for you to master money is by being a giver. Because if money masters you, then money tells you what you do. You have got to learn how to tell your money what it's going to do instead of it's telling what you're going to do. Every day, we go, every day you go to work for what? For money. So you trade your time for money every single day, correct? Every day you go give, you go literally trade one hour of your day for them to give you back $7.25, right? So they're telling you that your one hour, your time is worth $7.25. Let's take it to making $20 an hour. Every single day, somebody tells you that your one hour is worth $20, right? So an hour of your time is worth $20, correct? So somebody at the top, right? Because we about to raise up some kingdom financiers. I'm going to tell y'all something. We about to raise up some. I got to put my hair back because we got some millionaires about to come up out this thing. I love to give, but I stopped with certain people because I couldn't count on them. I never look to people. I'm going to be real with y'all. I don't look to people to take care of me. God is my provider. Provider. Anytime I give money to somebody, so if I let somebody, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't let people borrow money. Oh, 
pastor. You don't let people borrow money? No, I don't. You know why? The Bible says, owe no man anything but to love him. Why? Because more relationships are broken because of money than anything else. The moment that they can't pay you back, they start treating you funny, acting you funny, acting funny towards you. And the Bible says, you're not about, I'm not supposed to owe you anything but my love for you. That's the only thing I owe you is love. So I don't, so I don't let people borrow money from me. The Bible says the root of all evil, the root of evil is the love. It is not money. It is the love for money. The love for money. Where you become more concerned with that than anything else. So for me, if somebody asks me for money, right? I ask God. I say, God, do you want me to give it to him? And I'm going to be real with you. Sometimes God tells me no. There are times when God straight up tell me no. So I tell them no. It's his money. See, you think that only 10% is God's money. No. 100% is God's money. He just only asks for you to give him 10% back. But 100% of that is God's money, not just that 10%. And some of you only let God deal with your 10%, but everything, the other 90%, you control the 90%. God only controls the 10%. Yeah, God owns 100% of your money. That 10% is just only what he asks for you back. Because it's through that 10% that he can make sure you continually get the return on that money. Because when, listen, when your money become God's money, you won't be broke no more. Why? Because now all of a sudden your limitation is not involved anymore. You're riding off God's limitless power. When you are the one, when it's God, when your money is God's money, then God is obligated to take care of you. But when your money is your money, you obligated to take care of you. And the only way for your money, for, for your situation to change financially is for whoever's in control of it to change. You got to get out of the driver's seat of your money and put God in the driver's seat of your money. Yeah, God's money. So here's the thing. You have got to stop. Mm-hmm. And then I know there's somebody going to say, okay, well, what do you, this is what I've been talking. Okay. Well, Pastor Takaya, do you tithe off of gross or do you tithe off of net? Which one do you want to return off of? Because here's the thing. God doesn't always want you to give people money. You want to know why? Because sometimes God wants you to give them a word that's going to teach them how to handle it. God wants for you to have the wisdom to be able to handle the wealth. God wants for you to have the wisdom to be able to have what God wants for you to have. And if God gives you money, but you don't even have the wisdom to be able to handle it, what you think going to happen with it? Solomon asked God for wisdom and because Solomon asked God for wisdom, God gave him everything. So what if we started asking God for the wisdom? God, we thank you for the wisdom. We thank you for giving us wisdom, God. Man, I'm going to be honest with you. When I was um, with my uh, spiritual mother yesterday, she told us to write down what everything we were believing for, right? Okay, well, I'm going to be real with y'all. I wrote down, I was believing for a certain amount, right? Okay, well... Tithing is a false doctrine. Okay. That's for you. Okay. So listen. So I wrote down everything that I was believing for, right? Okay. So I realized that everything I wrote down, I was like, okay. But then she started talking about how, um, what's it called? Then she started all of a sudden talking about um, Solomon, how he asked for wisdom. And from Solomon asking for wisdom, that is what God, how God increased him all the more. So then I started realizing something. Hmm. 
maybe I should be asking for wisdom instead of asking for that. Because if God, because if I have wisdom, then I'm going to get there. So instead of me asking for that, I'm going to ask for wisdom instead. See, the thing about money that I have learned is this. Money is a currency, correct? We know that, right? So money measures value, right? right? Don't money measure value? Money tells you how much something is worth, right? Money measures value. So there's a product, right? That gets put. Now I'm going to tell you right now, I'm about to start preaching and I'm about to just teach whatever God gives me makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, pull your notebook back out. Okay. So money measures value, correct? Because God told me we getting free financially. So I'm going to go where God is leading me at. Okay. So money measures value, correct? Okay, Lord, because I'm going to be honest with y'all. I am having to get out of my comfort zone to teach y'all this. Because I know that I'm about to be crucified and stoned for what I'm about to teach y'all. And I'm like, oh, Lord, they finna leave. They finna get mad. Like, internally, I'm like, yep, they finna leave. They finna be mad. They gonna be angry. But God says, God is telling me, Takaya, stop thinking like that. <laughs> because I know what I'm teaching is very uncomfortable to a lot of people. But I'm just going to be obedient to what God is telling me to do. So... Money comes to measure value, right? Okay, so money is looking for value, okay? Money is looking for value, okay? So knowledge, so your knowledge measures, so by knowledge, right? So money comes and says, okay, I'm looking for value in her life. Money is looking for value in your life. Wherever you will, you will notice this concerning money, right? Wherever there is the most knowledge at in your life, that is the area you will grow in the most. Oh, that's good. Somebody said the crazy thing is they give the credit card companies 19, 31%, but can't give God 10%. I didn't say it. She said it. But listen, money is looking to measure value, correct? So, Wealth, it's so okay. Solomon asked God for wisdom, correct? And when Solomon increased in wisdom and Solomon increased in his knowledge, then all of a sudden, what happened? Then all of a sudden, all of these things started coming towards towards Solomon. Why? Because there was value in Solomon because Solomon had wisdom. Why would you go? Okay, so take for instance, when you go to college, right? Okay, money comes to measure value. Destiny said, Takaya, can you please repeat the last thing? Okay, y'all. Now, y'all. Okay, so an example. Okay, so Solomon had wisdom, right? Okay, Solomon had wisdom, right? I'm trying to get comfortable in this chair, y'all. And then because Solomon had wisdom, then all of these things came to Solomon, correct? Okay, now, example, another example. Okay, take for instance, when you go to college, right? Whenever you go to college, they will then say, okay, you go to college for this thing, okay? So then I'm going to say that the salary, so say a psychologist, right? So say I was going to go to school for psychology. Psychologists, I want to say they made 52000 a year, right? Okay, so then... Am I t is it Solomon that I'm talking about or is somebody in the Bible? Somebody in the Bible who asked for wisdom. Whoever it was that asked for wisdom. Okay, y'all. Okay. I, I'm not preaching with my Bible. So that's why I'm not like, yeah. So, but if I had my Bible, what you call it? But I'm good. I'm fine. Okay. So then, okay. Yeah. Cause I got people trying to correct me. And so that's why I'm like. Yeah. So fine. Okay. So listen, so you go to college, right? So I was going to go to college for psychology, right? So they say psychologist makes $52,000 a year, right? So, okay. They measure the value. Okay. So they measure the value, right? Correct. So they say, okay, the value of your psychology degree is, is me giving you back $52,000 thousand dollars okay so i'm gonna give you fifty two thousand dollars a year because that is what i have deemed is the value for
for that knowledge. That's how much your psychology knowledge is worth. Your psychology knowledge is worth $52,000 a year. So then they say, I'm going to give you $52,000 a year. To me that's how they measure their value, right? Okay, so money is used to measure value. So that's why it's so important for you to read books, for you to store up knowledge. The Bible says a wise man stores up knowledge. Then the Bible says the one who increases in knowledge, he increases in power. Then Deuteronomy 8.18 says, thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for he gives you power to get wealth. So God uses power to get wealth, but in order to increase power, you have have to increase your knowledge first in order to be able to get the power that is needed to get the wealth because the wealth measures the value of the knowledge so when you increase your knowledge you're increasing the value on your life you're increasing the value in which the wealth that god can bring into you so that's why you will note so the bible says as a man thinks so is he so what god needs to do is god has to grow your mind in order to grow your life because where is knowledge stored up at as a man thinks so is he right so you become a sum total of what's going on in your mind right where do you store up knowledge at? Knowledge is stored in the mind. So the subconscious mind, right? So when information comes in, your subconscious mind is then going to, so it um generalizes it. My life coaching and neurolinguistics people, mindset people, you're going to get this. Okay. So when knowledge comes into you, right, it's going to, it's going to distort, generalize and delete it. Right. Okay. Then it's going to based off the filters that you have internally. Right. So based off of the beliefs you have, the moral, you have time, you have location, um, memories based off memories you have and things like that. So like the psychology of it all. Right. So then that information is going to go through that filter. Right. And based off of the filters internally will determine what happens or where that information goes to. So say that you have basically one of your beliefs is that you're going to be wealthy, right? Then I'm going to be able to teach you something about wealth and you're going to receive that. But say that your belief is about you Oh, we just all broke. Everybody's broke, right? So then what's going to happen to you is this. Then when I start teaching about being wealthy, you're going to immediately want to reject that information because that information goes against something that you believe. So first goes into the mind, distort, delete, generalize, then goes through filters. Then it creates a state, right? Okay. So then a state, then after it creates a state, right? Then you're going to have a physiological response. So physiology, right? Then after the physiological response, then there's going to get a result that happened, but every result started with some with just in your mind. So every result you get every single day is a sum total of what's going on in your mind. I taught it to you scientifically. And then the biblical way says, as a man thinks, so is he. That makes sense to y'all. Cause when I teach on science and stuff like that, like uh, in like scientific way, I know sometimes we can kind of get a little lost. So I pray that makes sense to y'all. And so, yes. Yeah, so money measures value, right? So, okay. Mm. Okay. So it's very important for you to expand your knowledge. It's very important for you to expand your thinking. That's why it's important for you to get a bigger view, for you to get bigger beliefs, for you to get a greater understanding. That's why books are so vital. That's why reading your Bible is so vital. That's why it's so vital for you to get knowledge because every single thing that you, I will be honest to tell you this, the amount of money you make today is a sum total of the knowledge you have concerning your value. So if I want to raise how much money I'm making, if I want to raise my wealth, then I need to raise my value first. If you will raise your value, if you will raise the knowledge. And so how do I raise my value? I increase my knowledge. So if I increase my knowledge, then I will increase my value. And when I increase my value, then more then it will keep coming to me. Because here's the thing. Here's another thing too. Oh yeah, I have some book suggestions. I'll get there. Here's another thing too. Okay. So money comes. Okay. So say money comes to you, right? Based off. Okay. The Bible says where little, where, um, 
Okay, let me. I'm gonna show you something biblically, and I'm gonna show it to you scientifically. Okay, okay. So all my psychology majors are like, yes, pastor. So, okay. When money comes to you, right? When God gives you, when God gives you money, right? If you spend all of your money, then you're letting God know that's the amount you can handle. So you will notice you will keep repetitively staying at that same place because based off you, how you handle that, which God gives you will determine if he increases it or not. Okay. So whenever you get a thousand dollars, right? Say you go blow that thousand dollars that day, right? Then that lets God then know, okay, she can only handle a thousand dollars at a time because Based off of that amount I give her because I, she has not shown me she knows how to be wise and handle that, then I cannot give her any more than that. Correct? Okay, let me show you in the scripture. So in this scripture, the Bible says the kingdom of God is like the, the, the men with the talents, right? Okay, so there was one who was given this amount of talents and he doubled his talents, right? There was another one who was given his talents and he doubled his too. But then there was one who was given a talent and he buried the talent. And he says to him who is who much is given, then God will add more to him, right? But to the one who doesn't, God says to the one who is given, but he said, oh, I got I'm going to have to go to that scripture because I don't want to misquote that scripture. Somebody go. Oh, let me go to it on my phone. I forgot I got my phone right here. Okay, let's read Matthew chapter 25, 14 through 30. Let's read it in the message. Do they have it in the message? Are you at message Bible? No message. Okay, let's read this in the message Bible, okay? Okay, it is, it's also like a man going off on an extended trip. He called his servants together and delegated responsibilities. Listen, listen to the message translation of this. To one he gave $5,000 and to another $2,000 and to a third one, 1,000, depending on their abilities. So he gave one $5,000, one $2,000 and the third one he gave $1,000 to. And you tell me the Bible don't talk about it. It says, then he left and right off the first servant went to work and doubled his master's investment. The second did the same, but the man with the single thousand dug a hole and carefully buried his master's money. After a long absence, the master of those three servants came back and settled up with them. The one given $5,000 showed himself how he had doubled his investment. His master commended him. Good work. You did your job well. From now on, be my partner. So all because he handled that, that $5,000 well, then double that 5,000. Then the master then says, Hey, come be my partner now. Okay. Then the servant given one, th oh no, the servant with 2000 showed how he had doubled his master's investment and his master committed him. Good work. You did your job. Well, from now on, come be my partner. So the servant given 1000 said, master, I know you have high standards and hate careless ways that you demand the best and make no allowances for error. I was afraid I might disappoint you. So I found a good hiding place and secured your money. Oh, crud. Please, Lord, let my husband come out here. Don't get out. Don't get out. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. FedEx is here. Don't let my dog eat nobody. Stay inside. You already know, I think.
Sorry, y'all. Today at my daughter, so y'all know my daughter goes to um, tumbling, right? And so today at my daughter's tumbling class, they have to wear like, um, okay. Y'all, sorry. Oh, what, did somebody thought I, I cussed? Yeah, my dog's like, no, I said crud. Y'all, look, I ordered this for my daughter because my daughter's in tumbling and stuff like that. And so uh, she has to wear cheetah print today for her tumbling class. And so I had to go get uh, her outfit that I ordered off Amazon for her. Y'all, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's yeah. they have to wear like cheetah print today. So I got her some, y'all. Okay, so let's get back to the word. It said, the servant given 1,000 said, Master, God is about to deliver me today because I already know exactly where this is going. I already know exactly where this is going, Destiny. It says, Master, I know you have high standards and you hate careless ways that you demand the best and make no allowances forever. I was afraid I might disappoint you. So I found a good hiding place and secured your money. Here it is, safe and sound, down to the last cent. Listen to this. The master was furious. That's a terrible way to live. It's criminal to live cautiously like that. If you knew I was after the best, why did you do less than the least? He says the least you could you could have done would have been to invest the sum with the bankers where at least I would have gotten a little interest. Take the thousand and give it to the one who risked the most and get rid of this play it safe who won't go out on a limb. It says, and get rid of this, play it safe, who won't go out on a limb. Throw him out into utter darkness. If that was not a slap in the face. Can I just read that again? Because I think we could all do good to read that whole story again, okay? It says, it's also like a man going off on an extended trip. He called his servants together. And it delegated responsibilities to one. He gave 5,000 to another 2,000 to a third one, 1,000, depending on their abilities. Then he left right off. The first servant went to work and doubled his master's investment. The second did the same, but the man, where is all these people coming from? Where's all these packages coming from y'all? I ain't ordered no. I, I don't even know who this is. I'll be back again, y'all. I got all these packages keep getting delivered to my house, and I don't even know what this one is even from, y'all. So let me go get this package that I didn't even know I ordered. <laughs> what did I order now? You need to be nice. I got you. I got you. Okay, honey. I'm like, I don't even know where these packages are coming from. I'm like... Come on, Jesus. If, if all these packages coming to my house is symbology of the blessing, God, then I receive it, Lord. I receive it. I'm like, I receive these packages. Don't know who they from. I'm like, trying to think, did I order? What did I order? Is that for me? Amelia. Oh, okay. That's Amelia's packages. So praise God, y'all. Amelia's insurance makes sure that she has diapers, wipes. Uh, get out of my plant. They make sure she has diapers, wipes, her cream, her formula, everything. Like they make sure she has everything that she needs and stuff. So they so now Millie got packages come. I'm like, y'all listen, at this point, I'm like, okay, listen, God, where is all these packages coming from? Okay, it says, then he left right off the first servant went to work. And it said, and doubled his master's investment. The second did the same. But the man with the single thousand dug a hole and carefully buried his master's money. After a long absence, the master of those three servants came back and settled up with them. It says, the one given $5,000 showed him how he had doubled his investment. His masters commended him. Good work. You did your job well. From now on, be my partner. The servant with the 2000 showed how he had doubled his master's investment. His master commended him. Good work. You did your job well. From now on, be my, my partner. The servant given $1,000 said, Master, I know you have high standards and hate careless ways. It says that you demand the best and make no allowances for error. 
I was afraid I might disappoint you. So I found a good hiding place and secured your money. Here it is, safe and sound, down to the last cent. Go ahead and ask. It says, the master was furious. That's a terrible way to live. It's criminal to live cautiously like that. If you knew I was after the best, why did you do less than the least? The least you could have done would have been to invest the sum with the bankers, where at least I would have gotten a little interest. Take the thousand and give it to the one who risked the most and get rid of this play it safe who won't go out on a limb. Throw him out into utter darkness. Anybody got the revelation yet? Do you see how based off of their beliefs, do you see how based off their beliefs, they handled the money differently? That is the biblical psychology of money. That is a biblical way to talk about the psychology of money because based off of what they believed about their master determined how they handled what? the master gave them. They were given money based off of their abilities, based off of their abilities. Now let's break down the word abilities. Am I teaching anybody today? Okay. What does the word abilities mean? I'm like, why did I go get to Hindu? Oh, let's see Hebrew. Okay, so ability in the Bible can be defined as the skill to do something. So ability in the Bible means the skill to do something, right? So based off of their skills to do something, that was how much he gave them. He gave them the amount in proportion to their skills and to their ability to be able to handle it. So God blessed them based off of their abilities and their a pro a proportion to their skills. You get that, right? Did I, did I tell you that money measures value? So based off of their value, based off of their knowledge, based off their ability to handle it was based off the amount that God gave them. What if the reason why you ain't got no more any more money is because you have not increased your abilities. You have not increased your skills. You have not increased your ability to be able to handle it. Because can I tell you something? We are all valued servants of God. God loves each and every one of us. But God's, but just because God's love you does not mean he going to give you something that you can't handle. We think that, oh, because God loves us. Oh, God loves me. So God's going to do that. No. You need knowledge. You need wisdom. You need understanding. You got to know how to handle it because God can love you out. Because here's the thing. Think about, because here's the thing about God love, God's love. The Bible says nothing can separate you from the love of God. There are people in hell right now that God loves. There are people broke right now. I know a lot of broke people that God loves them so much. It ain't got nothing to do with love. That part of it, it ain't about love. It's about getting an understanding. It's about getting the wisdom. It's about getting the knowledge. Love, people who are loved go to, I mean, it, that's just the truth. So, based off their ability, right? So, and based off their mindset, right? Determine how they handle the money. The one who feared his master was the one who buried his money, right? Got it all back. He got double. What, um, what was your question, Destiny? Destiny said she had a question. Okay, I answered it. Okay, good. So here's the thing. You must, I'm telling you this, you must, you must, you must, 
You must increase your knowledge. You must increase your value. You must increase your skill. Like I said earlier, money is looking for value based off of their skill, based off their ability to determine how much they was given. And then based off that scripture, we see right there how, what did God do to, one, do to the one who was fearful in his money? To the one who was fearful with his money, what did God do to him? So if you're fearful in your money, what do you think is going to happen to you? God took away that which he had just because of his fear. Because of his fear, he lost that which he had. What if the reason why you are losing what you have right now is because your fear concerning your money? I will be honest with you. If you have a fear of failure, you will fail. Why? Because the one thing that jo Job said this, Job said, the thing that I feared came upon me. The thing you fear will eventually come upon you. That's why it's so important for you to not be in fear. Because he feared losing all his money. And what did he end up doing in the end? He lost all his money. So what if your fear is leading you further away from the very thing you're asking God for? Because many of you are asking for God to bless you financially. But your fear is leading you away from being blessed financially. Your fear of failure is leading you is leading you right to failure. He feared losing his money and he lost the money. If you fear failure, you're going to fail. If you fear that your business is not going to be successful, you can't be shocked when it don't become successful. Did you know that fear can get you sick? Get you sick? Did you know that fear can put you in sickness? Why? Because your subconscious mind does not know the difference between reality and fake. So just for you to fear sickness in your mind, you can cause sickness to come. Because the Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. Somebody said, my mom gave me $200 watching your live last night. Come on, God. So if you think fear, what are you going to... So if I have this fear of becoming sick, right? And if a man thinks so, is he? Why wouldn't I end up becoming sick if I have this fear of becoming sick? You can cause COVID to come to you without you even having to in contact anybody. I fear nothing but the idea of man's ways when they want me in their life. And that's going to hinder all your relationships. Because if you fear man's ways when they come into your life, then you're going to always keep having people come into your life over and over and over again. It's going to take advantage of you. Because you will get that which you think one way or another. Yeah, these are my natural lips. I know y'all think I got Botox, but I don't. I was born with these lips. What if you take what you have to try to invest in your business as you still come up short? Somebody said, that's what happened to my husband. He had sepsis in January and kept fearing while he was in the hospital. He was fearing. When you took that money and you invested it, right? What made you invest it? Did you do it out of fear or did you do it out of faith? The Bible says you will have what you say. If you say something, it's going to come back. You, the Bible says you will have what you say. So when you say something, it's going to come back.
your mouth will make you broke quicker than the enemy will. You will eat your words. He says, those who, he said, life and death are is the power of the tongue, right? And those who eat the fruit of it will indulge in it. Life and death is in the power of the tongue and those who eat the fruit of it will indulge in it. Oh yeah, that's normal, girl. That's so normal. That's your flesh. So you will eat the fruit of your words. So you may eat good fruit. You may eat bad fruit. So if the fruit, so if your words keep saying over and over again, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm broke, right? Then there's going to be fruit that's going to come off that. And the fruit is going to be you broke, you broke, you broke. You're going to always see yourself always in a, in a sticky situation. You always going to run out. Tire always busting. All that kind of stuff. All that kind of stuff going to be happening. You're going to always see it happening. Why? Because you're eating the fruit of your words. You know, people who say, oh, girl, it's just like, I just can't ever get it together, right? You're going to eat the fruit of those words where you're never going to be able to get it together. Because those are the words that you're saying. And because you're because you're saying those words that you're never going to get it together, well, then you're going to eat those fruit of your words. See, you are ensuring your own demise. Somebody said, I'm speechless. I'm sick because I spoke that. I was fearful I wouldn't know what to do with my money. And now I don't have any. Thank you so much. I will speak more positive. That's why, I like, y'all want to do an exercise together? What are you believing God for? Let's do an exercise. Let's do an exercise today. I got time. Y'all want to do an exercise? Y'all got time for an exercise? Do y'all, okay, can I ask a question? Do y'all stay at home because like, okay, we've been on this live for about two hours, almost two hours, right? Like, do y'all stay at home because y'all have all the time in the world for me. I'll be noticing that. I love y'all so much and I thank y'all for y'all support. But like, all 157 of y'all, like y'all always be, y'all be like, I don't care. We gonna get our breakthrough or something. Okay, I be one, I'm like, man, they sure got a lot of time, God. Like, hmm. Like, which y'all know I work from home, so I'm like, I get it. So I'm like, I'm like, man, I always have so much time, God. Okay, y'all ready? Get a piece of paper out. Get a piece of paper. We're going to do a little bit of profit, prophetic. This is going to be prophetic business coaching. I'm going to give each and every last one of y'all a free coaching session right now. I'm about to give every last one of you a free coaching session right now. Y'all ready for this free coaching session? I'm about to give a, a hundred. I got 156 over here, 11 over here. I'm about to give each and every one of y'all a free financial coaching session. Y'all ready? Got your paper? Because I know some of you like, man, God, I want to have a session with her, but I can't afford it. Well, here you go. It's free today. Okay, y'all ready? Okay. How much do you want to make every single month? You can put it in the comments as well. How much do you want to make every single month? I need a number. If you ever went to school for life coaching, you know this. Anytime you set a goal, 
It needs to be a smart goal. Your goal needs to be. It's not about I'm not being greedy. What, what does that mean being greedy? What does greediness look like? Because greediness is selfishness. So what means, what, what is greedy? Okay. So, okay. Your goal needs to be, okay, needs to be a smart goal, right? Okay. It needs to be specific. It needs to be realistic. So can you, you it, when I say realistic, what I mean is, can you really believe that God could do that for you? Do you really believe God can do that for you? And if you don't really believe it, then bring it down to a level you could devour it just right now. It needs to be attainable, right? So you can, so you can measure it, right? It needs to be realistic and it needs to be a timed goal. Now, okay, so it needs to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timed. Okay, let's do $10,000, right? Somebody says they want to make $10,000 a month. Let me ask you a question. What do you need to make every single day to make $10,000 a month? Do you know off the top of the head, your head? What do you need to make every single day? So how can you make 10,000 a month if you don't need to if you don't know how much you need to make in a day to get there? So you need to make $322.58. You need $322.58 every single day for you to hit 10k months, right? Okay, now let's say you only want to work five days a week, okay? Mothers that don't work. Okay, so say you are a mother who don't work, right? Can you not can you start a business from home? Okay, so you want to make ten thousand a month, right? We'll say there's thirty days in a month, but you only want to work five days a week, right? So that means you're only working twenty days out of the month. The other well, is it twenty? No. Hold on, y'all. Let me get my math together. Okay, 30, 30 days. It ain't 30. I'm going to do four weeks, okay? 28 days, right? Four weeks, and you working 20 days. This We're going to do a 28-day span, and you're working 20 days, right? And say you only work want to work Monday through Friday, right? And you want to work five days a week to make 10K, okay? So you need to know how much would you need to make every day in those 20 days, say you were only making money in them 20 days, right? Then you would need to make $500 a day, right? So then you need, so you need to make $500 a day in order to hit that goal. Okay, now let's dissect this even more. Is $10,000 really enough money for you every month? Okay, so... We're going to take this to a biblical way, okay? So you're making $10,000 a month. Now, you know that off top, 10% of that is going to tithe. So, okay, now you got $9,000 a month, right? Okay, now say we're on a give, save, spend system, right? You need to give, save, spend. Rich people pay themselves before. Listen, rich people pay themselves before they pay their other people, correct? Okay, so say you give 10% to God and you give 10% to yourself, right? Okay, giving 10% to God, 10% and going into a high interest bearing account. That's why you need to learn about compound interest. We may get to compound interest today in the rule of 72. We'll try to get there today, okay? Okay, so you get, so now... You say you put a thousand dollars to your tithe, then a thousand dollars go over to your um to you putting away for your financial well being, right? Okay, for your basically storing up wealth. So Prophetess Chappelle wants to make fifty thousand a month. Five thousand goes to God, the other five thousand, then say she puts that in an account, right? So now she's left with forty thousand dollars, or now you're left with eight thousand dollars. Okay. So now you're left with eight thousand dollars. Now, realistically, right? Most people who's making that amount of money, you're your rent may be 1500 to 2000 okay? So now, 
you your house payment is two thousand. So now you're making now you got six thousand dollars left. Okay. Now say you got three kids. Now groceries every single month. Uh, what is the average you spend on groceries? About you don't want to ask me, but because now I just kind of just do, I just buy, you know. But um, we'll say you spend a thousand on groceries. Okay. So now, man, you spend only four hundred ninety dollars a month on groceries. Man, take me back to them days. I don't spend, yeah. Okay, now you got $5,000 left. Now that's your groceries, okay? Okay, now your gas. How much you spending on gas? A week. So you're probably spending $400 a month on gas, right? That'll be about a realistic figure. About 400 on gas, a realistic figure. What's about the median people make on gas? Okay, so we say 400 on gas, okay? Okay, now we're down to $4,600. Okay, so now you need to go pay your cell phone bill. Now, the average cell phone bill is about $300. Now you got $4,300. Okay, then you got to go pay your light bill, right? Now, we know your light bill probably about, we're going to say your light bill is about, you know, 200 right? Okay, now you got to get, say you got a gas bill too. You got to pay gas, right? So that's 160. Oh, I'm going to tell you 50 now, but it, the higher you go, it gets more. Okay. So now you got $3,940 left. Okay. Well, now we got to pay direct TV because we like to watch TV. Okay. That's another $200 right there, right? Okay. So now also too, let's say you make 10 K, but you got people on payroll. Okay, so you paying your workers a thousand dollars a month, right? You got payroll. You got to make sure we got to do payroll, right? Because by when you're making 10k, you probably got somebody on your team. So say your payroll for the month. Now this is low payroll. This ain't no high payroll. Say your payroll a month is about a thousand dollars, right? Okay. Okay. Now also we got to pay. Uh, have we paid our water bill yet? Oh, we ain't paid our water bill. Water bill probably about a hundred dollars. Now we're down to $2,640. Okay. Then say you got to pay for insurance. Well, we know most people's insurance is about $640. But, so we're going to say insurance about $600. You never looked at your money like this, did you? Okay. Uh, now, you know, we got to make sure we have inventory. Then our inventory, I mean, it's probably about like, what, $1,000 a month? How much is our inventory? Let's say inventory is just $500. Oh, now we're down to $1,540. Oh, but we haven't even talked about our car note. Well, now we got to go pay car note, y'all. Car note is probably like $700. Oh, well, now we only got $840 left. Well, <coughs> we got to go on date night. Well, date night is going to be about a cool $200. Now we got $640 left. Then we got to take care of our lunch. Well, okay, my lunch is probably going to cost me about what? Oh, the kids in daycare. Oh, well, the kids in daycare every single uh, month is probably going to cost me about a cool, what, five, five hundred to $1,000, right? How much is it? Okay, so say say that that person is 782 now you got negative one hundred and forty two dollars. You got negative one hundred and forty two dollars now. Oh, that doesn't even include the household necessities. That doesn't even include all the other stuff. So what? So if Johnny, <laughs> I see this on TikTok. So if Johnny wants to make ten thousand dollars a month, but that's but Johnny has all of that, right? Then what is Johnny at the end of the month? Johnny is broke. You want numbers and figures because that $10,000 sounds good to your spirit. You are saying you want 10K because it sounds good, but you don't even know if 10K is enough for you. And mind you, we only paid tithe. We didn't even sow the seeds that's God going to be asking us. So you making 10K a month and then God, you, I'm going to be real with you. You had a point where God is over here telling you to sow, um, say God tells you to sow a $500 seed or a $250 seed, right? But see, you ain't even got no seed money because when you try to go sow your seed, now you're negative $392. 
So let me go back and ask you. You tell me that you want to make 10K a month. You tell me you want 50K a month. But if you had that amount of money a month, right? How much money do you really need? Is that enough for you? <laughs> yeah. So I want for you to write down on a pen and get your paper. So the first number you had was that amount, right? But now that I've showed you that illustration, how much do you really need a month? Because you need to know that if God, okay, listen, God gave them according to their abilities, right? Right? You need to then go, okay, you want to make $200,000 a month. I want you to tell me right now, if God gave you $200,000, right? Okay, so you're making two hundred dollars a month. That means that now you're tithing $20,000 a month, right? So you're giving twenty dollars a month, right? Because you're making $2,100 a month, right? How are you doing right now? We're just giving off of what God is giving you now. You want to, you make 185,000 a month. Your tithe is 18,500. 18, How are you doing with being faithful where you are right now? And I want you to know, Pharma mama. If 8,000 is fine for you, you know, like that. And that's what I'm saying. Like everybody, you pick the number for you. This is exclusive. This is not for everybody. This is exclusive. So somebody said, I'm not going to lie. Not good. So if God cannot trust you now, how realistic do you think what you're asking for is going to happen? We're talking about money right now. If, so how are you doing with what you're doing right now, right? Okay. And then with what God gives you right now. So, so you're believing for that, right? And then how are you doing with what you have now. So you're not doing good, but you're getting by. So how do we get better? We get consistent. The way we get better is we get consistent. The only way to improve is through consistency. It's what you do repetitively that causes a chain reaction in your life. If we want to see a chain reaction in our life, that's how we improve. Okay, that's fine with me. Bye. So, going back to the exercise, right? Okay, so let's go back to the exercise, okay? So, how much do you need to make every single month? Okay, and so going through breaking it down, right? Going through breaking it down then, right? And so in you going through breaking it down, is that amount the right amount you should be believing for? Okay, good. Okay, now we're getting somewhere, y'all. Okay, now let me ask you a question. 
I want you to think about you right now, your habits, your patterns, all of that. I want you to think about the version. I want you to think about the version of you right now who makes whatever you make right now. I want you to think about your habits. I want you to think about your patterns. I want you to think about all of that, right? I want you to think about that, okay? Okay. I know y'all. And that's why I say, listen, if you don't agree with what I'm teaching people, that's okay. You know what I mean? Like, I am completely okay with that. Why? Why am I completely okay with that? Because somebody said I'm teaching people that don't have enough the wrong way to think. I was the person who didn't have enough. I was the one who was broke. I was the one with the with the negative bank account. I used to be the girl who was that. I've been that person before. So I think that I can teach somebody something that I've walked through. I'm just teaching. I've walked through that. I know what it's like to not have enough. I've already walked that road before. So for me personally, so like, and here's the thing. I'm teaching off experience. So if you don't, listen. If you don't want to be wealthy, this is not the life for you. I'm just going to say that. that. That way it'll make it better. Maybe that'll kind of like rid the room, right? If you don't want to be wealthy, leave. If you don't want to be, if you don't want money, leave. Just, just because you are, you don't want change, don't try to come against everybody else who does because there are people here who actually want to change and so like I've already told y'all I believe that the people connected to me will be multimillionaires and stuff like that and so if you don't want to be in that group if you don't want to you know what I mean like that's okay with me. I'm one of the people like, I don't need for everybody to be like me. That, that's just me. I don't need everybody to want to be like me. All I can do is do what God has called me to do. And if you don't want to be blessed, if you don't want to be financial, if you don't want to be wealthy, that's okay. You know, like, if you don't want to be wealthy, that's okay. And things like that. Like, if you don't want to do the things, you know what I mean? Like, that's okay. I'm just telling you, like, literally, like, it's okay. <laughs> like, I don't need everybody. I'm just, I'm just doing what God called me to do. And if that, and if that, that's just, yeah. So, okay, going back to our exercise, right? Okay, so I want you to think about, yeah, I want you to think about the version I want to, I'm going to block that person just because like, I don't want that. I don't want that in my room. I just don't want that in my room at all. I'm blocking that person myself because I, I just don't even want that in. Even if they want to be here, I don't want that in my room because I, that, I just don't want that today. But here, okay. So going back to, I want you to think about where you, who you are now, right? Now I want you to close your eyes. Yeah, I'm taking negativity out of the room. So I want you to close your eyes right now, okay? Oh, that's good. Give as if we're living in those means. That's good. I want you to close your mind. I don't want you texting. I don't want no writing. I want you to close your mind right now. We're going to do an exercise. Close your mind. I mean, not close your mind. I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes right now.
Are you are y'all eyes closed? Close your eyes. Okay. We're gonna do an exercise. I want you to go back. I want you to go back to that time. Go right back to that time now. Seeing what you saw, hearing what you heard, that time where you're making that amount of money that you put that you want to make. I want you to go to that time and I want you to go to that time where you're making 50K every single month. If it's 100K every month, if you're a millionaire, I want you to go and I want you to go to that time where you're making this amount every single month. And I want for you to step out and I want you to look at that version of you. I want you to see her. I want you to look at that version of you that's making that amount of money every single month. And as you're looking at that version of you that's making that amount of money every month, I want you to look at her and I want you to see what is different about her than who you are now. Are you, I want you to see, is she disciplined? Is she consistent? Does she still have fear or is she no longer in fear anymore? I want you to look at her. This is the version of you that trusts God. She truly believes that God is her provider. As you look at her, I want you to see how she believes that God is faithful. She believes that God never leaves her. God never forsakes her. She doesn't put her trust in money, but she trusts God now. I want you to see that, that she trusts God. It's not that she trusts the money, but she trusts God. I want you to look at that version of you who trusts God. And because now she trusts God, she's no longer struggling anymore. That version of you, this is the version of you who trusts God. Not the version of you that was on drugs. I'm talking about a different one. I'm talking about the one who trusts God. And because she now trusts God, she's able to move easily and effortlessly. Okay, I want y'all to tell me. What did you notice about that version of you that's different than who you are now? I want you to tell me about that version of you versus who you are right now. That's a life coaching technique that you can use. Mm, she was at peace. She's a shining star. She's, he's married. He's traveling, living the life. Okay. Living life. Right. Okay. Mm. I want you to, I want to ask a question. She's not so mean. That's funny. <laughs> so that version of you that makes 8,000 a month is nicer. <laughs> That's a funny. <laughs> She's like, she's not that mean anymore. Can I ask you, did all of this happen because you have money or did all of this happen because you trusted God? She spends more time with her family, businesswoman, more relaxed, letting things go that you can't control. She's able to be more blessed. Robin said she had more faith. She's freer. I had little faith then. I'm full of faith now. I'm a firm believer that through God, all th things are are. She is finally sure and confident within herself. About to jump in this office. You better jump up and down, Terrica. She's being the blessing she wanted to see. So now you see what is the difference between the version of you right now versus her. See, you cannot get to a place that you've never seen. 
through that technique, I need it for you to see the place you want to be at. Then I need for you to see what that version of you look like. Because if you don't know what that version of you look like, you're never going to be able to get to her. The only way I can get to her is know how to get to know how to get to her. I got to know what she looks like. I got to know how she acts. I got to know what she did. And now that you know that one thing she did is she trusted God. Because when she trusted God, she got there. So what do you need to do if you want to get where you want to go? You notice the version of you right now. So the version of you right now is in fear. She wasn't in fear. Right now, you have no peace. She has peace. Right now, you don't know how you're going to make ends meet. That version of you, she wasn't worried about that. Right now, you doubt yourself. That version of you, she don't doubt herself. That version of you was a procrastinator. That You right now is a procrastinator. That version of you, she's not a procrastinator. Now that you can see, that now you're, I'm showing you the bridge. So that's the bridge, right? You got to be able to know the bridge between where you are now and where you want to go. So now you see where you are now and now you see the difference. So then you need to go and change your behaviors to match and mirror the one you want to become. Money doesn't control her anymore. Come on. Now that you see, that's why I had you write it out. Because I needed you to be able to see who you are now and who you want to be. And now that you can see who you are now versus who you want to be, now you're going to be able to bridge that gap to get where you want to go in life. I think y'all may be late. <laughs> so that is our life coaching session. Did y'all enjoy this life coaching session today? Gave y'all a life coaching session today. Y'all enjoy this free life coaching session today. Y'all enjoyed it. Praise God. How do we trust God more? Trust with God is built through intimacy with God. Because it's difficult to trust what you don't have intimacy with. You know, like, how do you learn how to trust your spouse? Through time. You spend time with them. You get to know them. And when you get to know God and you, and you spend time with God, you're going to be able to then trust God. So... I know I didn't get a chance to do this earlier because we went into that. I'm going to have to do the offering a little different today, y'all, because seeing that I'm on my iPad, I'm going to have to, uh, ooh, how do I do this? Okay, let's, let's figure this out. Okay, green screen. Um, get the, okay, I hate to have to use that green screen. Okay, now I got to find the exact thing I need. Please, Lord, don't let me put the wrong thing up here. Oh, Lord, please don't let me put the wrong thing up here. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Seriously? Mm, let me see if I can... Um, Y'all, my husband and are cooking something so good. You know what? We're going to have to just go back to the old-fashioned way. Oh, compound. Okay, what is compound interest? Give me just a second. I'll tell you what compound interest is. Destiny, we're going to have to take a... Uh, I, I do this every day, but I won't be doing it tomorrow because I'm going to be in... Um, yes, yes. Anybody in my mentorship, you will always get the emails every single week. You will always get emails. Um, I go live typically every day, but I didn't. But I won't be live tomorrow because I'm going to be in New York, y'all. Okay, so we're going to take up offering the old-fashioned way because I don't have the, the stuff. I don't have the, the, the proper thing I need to be able to show it to y'all. Also, um, 
Yeah, I am taking on clients. Um, let me see what time. I have no sessions today. I, okay, now listen. If you book a session with me, do not book anything until Monday. It, it has to be Monday. Destiny's going to come on and give y'all all the information, okay? So stick around. Destiny's about to come on to give us all the information, y'all. Oh, I guess I didn't invite her yet. She's going to come on and give you all the information you need, okay? So just hold on. Destiny's going to give you all the information, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey. Come on, woman of God. You did that thing, girl, today. Let me tell you something. I just want to say, because I need to say this, because y'all know she's not just, um, you know, my boss, and I don't just assist her. But, girl, I thank God for a friend like you. <laughs> I thank God that God connected me with a best friend like you, Takaya. I have been mm -hmm. waiting for someone who just is on a level do you know i prayed about this years ago years really? ago years ago i prayed i said god i want somebody who is not afraid of money like can we all just make money can we all i'm like i thought you got so excited girl you turned off your sound and I want to talk about something real quick, okay? Because I know I have people asking me questions about, like, compound interest, things like that. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the real, real, listen, Destiny, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Destiny? Okay, so real quick, y'all, I'm going to talk about the rule of 72, okay? So rule of 72. So rule of 72 says this. You take the interest rate, right? So, okay, whenever you put your money into a bank account, right? So whenever you put your money into like a savings account, right? I want to bring Destiny on because I really want Destiny to hear this because it's going to really, I think I've taught Destiny this, but I don't know, but I'm going to tell you now. Okay, Destiny, listen, I'm going to teach y'all something real quick, okay? okay? Rule of 72, right? So this is why I have no savings accounts. That'll shock you. I do not have a savings account, okay? Like a normal savings account, like at a bank, right? Okay. So. Rule of 72 says this. So say you'll get a savings account. Now, savings account interest rate is about 0.1% right now, right? 0.2%, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So say Destiny takes $1,000. So most people are saving up to put $1,000 into a savings account, correct? Okay. So Destiny goes to the bank. That savings account, it has a 1% interest rate, right? Mm -hmm. So Destiny then goes in there, put her $1,000 into a savings account that is a 1% interest rate, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the rule of 72 says, okay, you take your interest rate and you, and you divide it by 72. And that's going to tell you how long it's going to take your money to double, right? So mm -hmm. If Destiny puts her $1,000 in an, in an account that has a 1% interest rate, it would take 72 years for Destiny's $1,000 to double. So, and then, let me tell you what the bank does, compound interest. I'm going to tell you what your bank does, okay? Okay. Okay, so Destiny puts $1,000 into the bank account, in her bank mm -hmm. account, right? Into her savings mm -hmm. account, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then Takaya comes right after Destiny, right? Mm -hmm. And... Takaya says, I need a thousand dollars out of the bank, right? Mm -hmm. Then the bank is going to, because listen, so the bank is then going to give me Destiny's thousand dollars. The bank is going to loan me out your thousand dollars, and the bank is literally going to charge me money on your thousand dollars. So right. I'm going to get charged a 15% interest rate on your thousand dollars, right? Right. But you're only making a 1% interest rate back from the bank. Lord, you about to make me go take all my so money. So they're putting the interest on top of the interest, right? Mm -hmm. You see that? So that's why it's so vital for you to understand that. Because if, if Destiny puts $10,000 in there, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's on a 1% interest rate, it's going to take Destiny 72 years for her $10,000 to, to turn over, right? Into $20,000, right? Mm hmm but then Takaya is then going to go into the bank, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get a loan out for $10,000 and they're going to loan me out Destiny's $10,000, right? But they're going to charge me a 20% interest rate or on, off of Destiny's $10,000. So they're willing to give Destiny 1%, but they're getting back 10%. Come on. Getting richer. Look, can I ask you stuff? Y'all know. Mm -hmm. Sorry. 
Because I know somebody else thinking, what well, what about credit unions? Same. Don't matter. It don't matter? Wow. It's a bank. It's a bank. You know how wow. the Bible says the rich rule over the who? Over the poor. Right? Mm-hmm. How often do the poor seek out the same information that the rich already know? Not often. Because here's the thing with food stamps, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so the ritual over the poor, right? Okay, so food stamps, right? The government tells you, right? The government tells you that you have to make a certain amount of money for me to give you food stamps, right? Right. So if you will remain in this certain tax bracket, I will give you food stamps in return for it, correct? Yes. That's what okay. they say. But in turn for the government to help you, they tell you, I need for you to stay poor in order to do so. Come on, Sakaya. Tell the truth. Now, and then here's the thing. Ain't you staying poor, right? Mm -hmm. Did you know that more of the poor in the middle class is finance is funding the government is funding the government more than the rich are, right? Mm -hmm. Listen, mm -hmm. when we all when everybody got that got the uh stimulus check, correct? Talk about it. Okay, when we all got a stimulus check, right? There was only a certain bracket that got the stimulus check, right? Mm -hmm. Why? Because they know that it's only that tax bracket that is wasteful and foolish with their money. P the poor in the middle class is foolish with their money. But the rich people are wiser with their money, right? So yes. they know, okay, I'm going to give my money to the ones who are going to be the ones that are going to be the ones to go back and stimulate the government. Because it's not the rich that's stimulating the government. It's the poor and the middle class that stimulate the government. So they then give you this money to get you to go back and stimulate their government because Come they on. know that you are the one who has the least information on it. Because when people got their stimulus check, what did they do with it? You went to Walmart, you went and bought clothes, I was just you went and funded, that. you were buying food, you were at Walmart. What were you doing? You were stimulating. What were you doing? They you want to know why they didn't need to give rich people money? Because they knew that the poor people would go and give it right back to the rich people. Come on, somebody. I'm because why do I need to go and give Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton owner? a stimulus check when I know that Shaquita and Shanene, if I just give her $5,000, yeah. Shaquita and Nene is going to go to it's going to go to Louis Vuitton and give Louis Vuitton right Come back that money. Then Louis Kaya. Vuitton is going to go pay taxes off that money. So I don't need to give the money to, to Louis Vuitton. I need to give the money to the one who's going to go shop at Louis Vuitton. Come on. Come on. You see how mm -hmm. they do that? Yes. So that's why the Bible says, and then the Bible says, the borrower is a servant to the lender. Why? Because how many borrowers know the information that the lenders know? The lender oh knows, God. right? The lender knows that they are taking your money and lending it back to other people, right? Mm. But the borrower don't know that information, right? Nope. Mm -hmm. Because make no mistake, you don't think that they knew inflation was coming? Yeah, they knew. You didn't they think created. they knew gas prices was going to rise? They knew. So then, so, okay, what do I need to do then? So, okay, I'm going to give them this money because here's the thing. It's all about the mindset, right? They know the mm -hmm. mindset. The mindset of the poor and the middle class is comfort and gratification. So they mm -hmm. say, okay, let me feed their comfort and gratification now because mm -hmm. if I can feed their comfort and gratification now, then later on when I go back and I raise up this inflation and mm -hmm. I raise up the gas prices, then they're not going to be able to, they're not going to really see it coming because I've already gratified them and I've already taken care of them. So they're not going to see it when I take away from them because I already took care of them first. You God, I, all I got. So the borrower is. is a servant or a slave to the lender because the borrower do not have the information that the lender has. My God, my God. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm y'all, listen. 
Let me say it's something. all about the mind. That's it. Right? That's it. Like, okay. Control one the mind, thing control that a lot people. of you don't, one of the things y'all don't know is, okay, so I went to school for neuro-linguistics programming, right? Mm-hmm. In neuro-linguist programming, they teach us hypnotic pattern language, right? Mm-hmm. To be able to convince people of certain things. Mm-hmm. I don't personally use it because I don't feel right about it. But right. there is persuasive language, correct? Right. We know that. Market, right? Mm-hmm. So Market. they teach you how to sell, right? Yes. So neuro-linguistics people, right? They know how to sell. They know how to structure certain words. And it sounds like I'm telling you a whole lot of mumbo jumbo, Mm -hmm. but your subconscious mind picks it up. Because what you don't know is this. When I talk to you, right, when I raise my voice, when I lower my voice, your subconscious mind picks up on that. Mm -hmm. And what they will do is, do you ever notice when people are talking, they raise low, raise low, raise low, because what they're doing is they're speaking subliminally to your mind. They're speaking subliminally to your subconscious mind. Certain frequencies get to your subconscious mind. So the presidents, they hire, right? So like, take for instance, like President Obama, right? President Obama, when he won election that year, right? He actually, mm-hmm. now listen, this is not to go into politics. I'm just using that as an example. He hired a neuro-linguistics programming practitioner to write his speech. And when he wrote his speech, he kept saying, I'm going to help you. 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 I'm yes, gonna he help did. You. Mm-hmm. So then the people was left with this belief this, okay, he's going to help us, right? Yes, yes. Okay, then, right, what's going to, so then what becomes of that then is, then people will say, okay, what does I'm going to help you look like mm-hmm. for destiny? Right. So then destiny is going to hear that the president, they're going to give me money. Mm. Another yep. person who says help to them may be health. Okay. The president is going to help me um, with my health. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So whatever help looks like to you, they will embed. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you to get you to believe. And you will form that. I'm going to help you to whatever it is you need help. My in. God. My God. So that's why knowledge is so important. Yes, that's why I will read. That's why I read books. That's why I like I do all these things because it is through knowledge that helps mm-hmm. you to be able to grow. Yes. So that's some information to help y'all and things like that. So just know this whenever you. So that's why it's so. No, I'm not saying if he was good or not, because personally, I don't really for the most part about all of that. When you truly get down to the core level of it, it's kind of like, mm, you know, mm. Mm, everybody you know yeah, mm. yeah. so that would be my answer yeah. on that so that that's why be- that's why it's so important for you to get this information mm-hmm. because you know would you have known that about your inch would you have known that about a bank account if i would never told you that no i know about see the thing about it is and it makes so much sense because now before you they would never build let's be for i'm from the hood right you would never see back in the day credit unions inside of the ghetto, right? Mm -hmm. Now they're starting to build more things inside of the, inside of the ghetto. I'm from the hood. So I'm very Mm -hmm. aware of things that happen around for me. So I'm sitting here like, why all of a sudden now they want to build these banks in, in the hood. You know, my mind wasn't clicking, but now that you said what you said i understand it is control the mind control the people why would i put a bank why would i put a pnc Mm -hmm. in the hood if i know that the demographic in that area will never get approved there come on because you got to understand something cup companies are looking to make money right yeah every company right Mm -hmm. they want to make sure that their investment is sure right Mm -hmm. Why do you find, okay, so fast food restaurants, right? So you will notice that fast food restaurants will like, are more likely by colleges than they are by every other place. Why is it? Because people in college are not worried about cooking. They're where they want fast meals. So you will notice this. They will put fast food places right there because in that particular area, that's Mm -hmm. where it's needed, right? Okay. You're going to notice that in high traffic areas, you're going to see Starbucks in high traffic areas. Why? Because they want to make sure they're going to make a return on their investment. Mm. Okay. So here's the thing. So like little information for your business, right? When you're structuring your business, right? You got to know the market that you want to hit. You want to know the demographic, right? right? So they're looking Mm -hmm. at the demographic. They're looking at the marketplace, right? They want to know, okay, can my business make back 
the return here or can I maximize my money in this area, right? Okay. Right. So I like, take, for instance, like I'm going to use, okay, the water bottle, right? Okay. If I put my water bottle in HEB, it's going to be a dollar. Mm. Right. If I put my water on a plane, it's going to be $6. What was the difference? Same water bottle, different location. It all depends on location. So depending on the location will depend on the value of that thing. So that's why, like, okay, take, for instance, with Bougie's Boutique, right? Bougie's mm -hmm. Boutique, I'm not launching it in my hometown. Why? Because I know the demographic mm -hmm. of where I'm at. I'm not right. wanting to market to that certain demographic. I want to market to a place that gives me limitless potential because right. okay take for instance you will notice business business wise right you will mm -hmm. notice that i always launch on tiktok before i launch on facebook right yeah why would i mm -hmm. launch on facebook if that's where i have the least traction if i have more traction on tiktok you want to always be launching with a place where you have the most traffic at if you know that it's through your in-person clients you make more sale then you want to make sure that you maximize on the in-person sales okay yes so then okay say that i want but i want my um if i want to take my oil your hair oil right yes so say you want to take your hair oil worldwide right mm -hmm. then you setting up a storefront in your town and not having any online way of selling it, how mm -hmm. is that going to work? Because there's no online influence there, right? Right. So, like, if you know that if TikTok is a place you have your online influence, okay, then that's the place where you're going to want to market your mm -hmm. um market your hair oil. Why? Right. Because that's the place where you're going to have the highest chance of sellability, right? Okay, yes. so then, okay. And, okay, then, too, pricing, right? The, like mm -hmm. the artist selling pricing, right? Okay. Your oil is priced, it used to be priced at twelve dollars, right? Yes, it is. Have you noticed that now that it's priced at twenty-five dollars, your customer has changed? Yes. Because you're now marketing to a different set of people. Right. The people you used to market to are not the same people you're marketing to now. Or break it it's down. A, the people I used to market to, let's be mm -hmm. real, was local. Was local. But the now that your oil is global, mm-hmm. So because you took so because you changed the location of where you're marketing your hair oil, mm -hmm. now you can change your prices. Mm. My God. So that's why location, when you're launching anything or you're doing anything in a business, location makes a very big big, big difference. Right. Then you will need to know how to even sell in the first place. Mm -hmm. That's why, like for me, okay, I have an email list. Why do I have an email list? Because emails have an 83% chance of open rate versus 3% yes. of your social media audience is ready yes. to buy from you at any given time. So mm -hmm. you have a more higher chance to sell through emails than you do just social media alone. My God. And then, okay, you know how like y'all sign up and go ahead and just break it down for y'all. We already here on this vein. Let's go ahead and do it. Like, okay, y'all know how, like, you will sign up for a free masterclass, right? Mm -hmm. But you will notice that it's a free three-day masterclass, right? Right. But then the last day, they're selling something, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. That's called a lead magnet. That's a funnel, right? right? Mm -hmm. So you create a funnel. So when you're doing a funnel, you need lead magnets. So they will say, okay, I'm going to do a free masterclass to teach you on business. And then this free masterclass is to get you in, is going to get you on my email list. Mm -hmm. And by getting you on my free, by getting you on my email list, then I'm going to be able to sell to you my course that I'm getting ready to launch. Yes. Yes. So your funnel is all your free and you want to get them down into where they're paying. And so that's business one on one. That's how you market. My God, y'all. Sorry, I had to get my charger. Yeah. But, um, so if you have an online business, yeah. That's come how on. it works. Like even come I mean, on. when it comes to when it comes to like even growing your influence, you figure mm -hmm. out what works and you do it. Mm-hmm. I I have been be I have been posting videos enough to know which one works, which one don't. Right. And that's where like branding come in. Like branding is very, very big when you're doing businesses, you know? Because when you're branding, right? Everything that I mm -hmm. do is branding. Everything you do becomes branding. Right. Right? So like right. okay, if I'm launching a boutique, right? Why would I ever let you see me looking a hot mess? Walking billboard. Come on. Right? And then Come another on. thing what people don't understand is your social media accounts is literally your storefront. Mm. 
Okay, so your social media account is your storefront. When I go to your social media account, I need to be able to know what you what you do. Why? Because in America, people want easy. Don't nobody want difficult. They don't want confusion. They really don't. You got to make it simple. When somebody comes to your Facebook page, they should already know what you do. There should not be any question. Mm -hmm. I may if God and even in the hair to... even in the hair industry. Mm -hmm. people want easy they want fast they want you to be fast they want easy they don't want to be sitting in your chair for mm -hmm. five or six hours people look for can you get me out mm -hmm. when i'm ready to go can if i come to you on a friday especially on a friday saturday thursday friday saturday they want to make sure that you are able to get them in and out so you are correct mm -hmm. because people listen. want their time back yes listen people pay uber why do they do Uber Eats? Time. Time. Why do they do, why is Airbnb so popular? Time. Yes. Why is Lyft so popular? Time. Mm -hmm. People want their time back. If you can show people how to get their time back, they will pay you. It is, I'm going to tell you right now when it comes to pricing, it is very rare. It is very rare that you charge too much. People pay nope. you to solve their problem. If they know you will solve their problem, they don't care how much it, show, it costs. Can mm -hmm. you solve my problem? Can you solve my problem? You yep. pay Walmart to solve your problem. Louis Vuitton solves your problem. Mm -hmm. Why do you buy Louis Vuitton bags? Because you want to feel like you're rich, right? Yep. So if you don't necessarily have that amount of money in your account, you will go buy a bag to make you think you, mm -hmm. to make you feel like you have that money in your account. Mm -hmm. So people buy stuff they don't need and they can't afford just to get a feeling. Come on. Come on. So you're Tell buying status. Truth. Tell the truth. truth. So y'all, we need to take up, we need to take up the offering. Destiny, can you do the yeah. offering so we can go ahead and get that done? Yes. So you guys, in the way of our giving, this woman of God, good God Almighty Takaya. Did I tell you I'm thankful to you, my friend? I'm thankful to you, my friend. I'm so ready to see you, boo. Yes, I'm ready to see I you. Ready you know, see I'm, you I don't, I'm not going to have on no makeup because I already know what's going to happen. But in a way of the giving information, y'all. So the cash app and the time are the same thing. So it is dollar sign Takaya, capital T-A-K-I-Y-A, capital A. So that's dollar sign Takaya A. It is her name and the, and the last name only. Uh, only. So that's dollar sign Takaya A. The Zell is her name, Takaya124 at gmail.com. This is the Zell. The Zell <coughs> is Takaya124 at gmail.com. The Vimo is her complete name, at Takaya A. Revelo. Again, the Vimo is at Takaya A. Revelo. And the PayPal, do you still want to do PayPal or you? I don't really want to do PayPal because okay, they've been no with PayPal. So again, I'm gonna go over the cash app. The cash app is a uh, dollar sign Takaya A. The time is dollar sign Takaya A. The Zell is Takaya124 at gmail.com. The Venmo is at Takaya A Revelo. Also, the links are also in her bio. So when you leave from this uh, live, you can go to the links that are in her bio. Mm -hmm. Everything that I'm going to say um, to, to you, the links are in her bio. So all you got to do is leave the screen and the links are in her bio. So in a way of our announcements, y'all, if y'all still need the cash app. Oh, also on my link tree, you can go to my link tree and my link tree now allows you to become a partner with the ministry team. Okay. So um, if you didn't catch that, the link tree, you can now become a partner of the ministry in her link tree. The cash app is Takaya, dollar sign Takaya A. That's capital T-A-K-I-Y-A, capital A. So it's Takaya A. Thank you so much. Um, in the way of our announcements, if you are looking for prayers on today, which after this live, can I just keep it 100 what? I promise you, you don't need no prayers. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, prayers. I was getting ready to do prayers. Then God ministered me like, if you are looking for prayer requests, you can send your prayers to prayers with Takaya, a ministries at gmail.com. 
Again, that is prayers with Sakaya A Ministries at gmail.com. You can send your prayers over to the over um to that email. If you are looking um to have questions, you may have some questions about the ministry, or you would like to book Takaya because she is traveling now, or if you like to be a member, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this out there. If you want to book Takaya to come to an event to, for coaching, she does that too as well. She ain't, mm -hmm. she ain't okay, but she yeah. does that too as well. Yeah. Oh, so I, I've like never even thought about that. Even, okay, like say you're having an event, right? And you want mm -hmm. me to come and speak at your event, like coaching, on um, business, on the mind, yeah. anything like that. I yes. definitely, definitely, definitely would love to do that. Like yes. I'll come to that too. Yes. So um, I don't think about that. That's me. You're welcome. So as she um has said, she's um traveling now. So if you're looking to create, a, you know, want to come up with an event or if you have an event already and you want her to do some life coaching or business coaching, she is definitely available and is booking now. If you have any questions, you can go to inquire for Takaya a at gmail.com. Again, that email is inquire for Takaya at gmail.com. Everything I'm saying is also in her bio as well. If you are a member and we um go over for y'all that are new here, go over to Facebook and get into our get into the ministries group, which is the healing place. The group on Facebook is called the healing place, and you can go over um there and get the Go over to the healing place and become a member of the group. If you are a member of the group, it does not make you a member of the ministry. But if you would like to be a member of the ministry, you could go to inquire for Takaya at gmail.com. Again, as inquire for Takaya at gmail.com, and you can become a member of the ministry. Um, just send over your name and your phone number if you're looking to be a member of the ministry. Um, the, the members, uh, meet and greet is once a month. So we like to meet, um, with Pastor Takaya and Pastor Eli, um, with the ministry. Also, the woman of God has a book available, um, at Barnes and Nobles, Books a Million and Amazon. The book is called Hello Beautiful, Your Pain Was Not in Vain. Again, it is called Hello Beautiful, Your Pain Was Not in Vain. It said, am I a member? Um, if you are looking to be a member of the ministry, I'm not sure if you are a member or not, but if you're looking to be a member of the ministry, you can email inquireforthakaya at gmail.com. Send over your name and your phone number. Um, so the book um, is called Hello Beautiful, Your Pain Was Not In Vain. Again, that book is called Hello Beautiful, Your Pain Was Not In Vain. And everything I'm saying also, guys, is also in her bio. Also, if you have not registered yet for Zoom Church, go and register, y'all. Hit the link in her bio. This um, Zoom Church is every other Friday at 7 um, p.m. CST time. Just a reminder that the ministry works on CST time. So if you are looking to um, connect and you want to be a part of Zoom Church, the link is in her bios. But this coming week, because we know that the woman of God will be out and about this weekend, so Zoom Church will presume on Sunday, not Friday. So links will be sent out for Zoom Church. Register for Zoom Church so you can get that email for Sunday. Did we I talk know. about um, also, too, uh, for anybody who would like to sew? So I actually, that's what I was working on. So look, if you... Wait, what did you do, Linktree? All right, look. So I fixed my link, okay? So you see how it says ways to sow to the ministry. When you click that right now, it'll take you straight to be able to see these different ways. Now, it's only just a view link so you can at least see. And then you just pick whichever one and then you go to that. Now, no, you don't pick it by clicking, but it's just at least something to give us some information. Um, and also, have we talked about the prophetic mentorship program? No, not yet. That was my next thing. So also... Okay. Um, we we still would like everyone to come and join the mentorship program. The woman of God has a mentorship program. So if you are looking to be a part of the mentorship program, we meet three um three times a week. Um, 
at 6 30 p.m cst time and i know somebody said what's cst time so no we're not on eastern San standard time we are on cst time so you will have to figure out your time zone for that but mentorship program the link is in her bio register and become also a member of the uh, mentorship program once you register for the mentorship program and we see that you register you will now be accepted into the prophetic mentorship group that is on facebook so there's two groups on on, on facebook one is a is a free group everybody can join then the other one is a mentorship program, which is a monthly subscription. So if you are looking to uh, grow and whether you be in leadership or whether you just be a member, you want to grow or at a, rapidly in God and you want to become um, a part of the, the, well, not a part of the kingdom, but you want to be one body coming together in the kingdom to build the kingdom of God, go to the mentorship program, register um, to be a part of that uh, group as well. Also, if you are looking to um, write questions or send anything to uh, Pastor Sakaya and her, her family or to the ministry, you could go to P.O. Box 230, Mahea, Texas, 76667. Again, that is P.O. Box 230, Mahea, Texas, 76667. So we also know that the woman of God was featured in a magazine, y'all. Yeah. Come on, somebody. So she was featured in a magazine. If you are still looking to get a copy of um, her feature in the magazine, you can also go to Inquire for Sakaya, and we will shoot you over the link for um, the magazine that, sh that she was in so you can read up, up on the woman of God. And so um, just remember to always check your emails, guys. We email day in and day out. Check your emails. It's very important that you check your emails, you check your promotions, you check your spam because we have no control on where the email gets sent to once it's sent. That's something to do with the, the technology system. It's not in our control. So I want to make that very clear. We communicate very rapidly through email. So make sure that you are always checking your spam, your promotions, and your inbox to make sure that you are receiving these emails. Tonight is the mentorship program meet. Yay. And I am excited about that. And for y'all that don't know, the woman of God will be in a city near you. She will be in the Philadelphia, New York, and New Jersey area starting tomorrow. And I'm, I'm, I'm putting it in the atmosphere, but we're going to see how she feel about meeting some of the people who are in the local area, um, in these local areas. So we're going to see, guys. We're going to see. I'm going to do my best because you you know, you're still working on some things, but I'm going to do my best. But she will be in New York, New Jersey, and the Philadelphia area. So if you are looking to see the woman of God, we're going to try to make something happen. But if it don't happen, then it will okay, do we even Okay, do we have anybody here that is from New York, that's in New York? We got some people that's from New York. Well, I don't know. Yesterday they was like, we from New York. We from Philly. Anybody from Philly, New York? Do we got Jersey? any New York, Philly, or Jersey Oh, people? Jersey, Divine Open is. Yeah, I'll be in New Jersey. Do I got any New Jersey people? Girl, you going to have me on a whole tour down there. Come on, we we coming out. Delaware, come I'll on, Delaware. In. Delaware, you not too far. Yes, I'm from Brooklyn. Okay, Brooklyn. We love you too. Bye, Rachel. We love you too. We yes, yes. So, um, yeah, so she'll be down here. We start we sh we ship out to New York in the morning time, guys. So in the morning we will be like a package. No, like we ship out. like we explore New York. So the woman of God will be in N why y'all y'all better get ready what part of jersey are we going to be in this city we're going to we're the gonna jersey, be the jersey shore. shore so i'm going to take um the woman of god on the boardwalk and everything let her see some things she really talking about riding some rides but i don't know we are going to ride rides okay we're going, we're going to ride rides y'all
We gonna go get on them rides. She wants to have an adventure, and I want to do something I ain't never did. I'm gonna ride in a helicopter, and I know down there they have a helicopter ride. How much is this helicopter? I don't know how much. I ain't worried about that. We ain't worried about price. We just talked about being millionaire. God just told me we was rich. I ain't worried about that. I ain't worried about no price. I just, I'm just intrigued. <laughs> I've never done it. Yeah, I've never done it either. So it's a lot of things that me. Okay, well, you know what? Y'all, Destiny's paying for it because she's a millionaire. So it don't even matter. So you know what, Destiny? Come on. I then, this hill- listen, and then I if we want to do, you ever did the slingshot? Oh, I, I can tell you right now, that's a hard no. Oh, that's the hardest that? no you'll ever get from me. Yeah, she if you think. That. If you think for one that. second, I'm about to let somebody throw this this thing. <laughs> if you think I'm gonna let anybody throw this this body around, you 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 Come on, can y'all imagine that? Can y'all imagine that? Y'all, y'all, y'all better pray for Destiny to get they all better pray she get her mind back because she's she crazy. She think I'm going on a slick <laughs> job. So yes, we, we're okay, so we're gonna be in New Jersey. Okay. We got a whole itinerary. So we're gonna Friday, be in New we York, New York. Be New York Friday. We're gonna be in New Jersey Saturday. But we're, we're gonna, gonna be in New Jersey and Philly Saturday because and Philly Saturday because Saturday night is a gospel concert. We will be going to see Smokey Northfall, Kiki Shears, and all the good gospel artists that are coming to a city near you. So we will be at a gospel concert Saturday night. I lay Jersey hands on in the that whole beach. Okay, which beach, Destiny? I don't know what beach you're taking me to. I'm okay oh, with whatever. I'm going to take her to Wildwood because that's where I know all the rides are. Okay, Wildwood. Let me look this up. Wild Wildwood, New Jersey. New Jersey Boardwalk. Yeah, I think. Do they got popcorn? Yeah, they got popcorn. Don't be sitting up here trying to judge me about my They popcorn. got popcorn. She love popcorn, y'all. Wildwood is fun, yeah. Okay, like Wildwood or North Wildwood, man, they gotta get technical. Well, wherever the theme park Ooh, is. Oh, Destiny, you wanna go on a boat? Yes, I do wanna go on a boat. We can do that, but I'm not. They make it very clear to you. I'm not jumping out of no water. 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 I ain't jumping out of no water. Who's jumping out of water? We get no. Well, I'm not doing that. You said where I'm from. I'm from. I'm originally from Bristol, but I live in Philly. People go to do bird watching. I just don't see a version of me that want to sit there and look at birds. Well, I thought you said that we was going to do where we put the, the no. The, you um, said no. We to do this together. Okay, y'all. So together we are going to allow hawks to sit on our arms. No, hawks. you are. No, I'm, I'm in not. Bristol, PA. Bristol, PA. Not Bristol, Florida. I didn't even know they had a Bristol in Florida. Destiny, listen, I, I don't know what version of me you think you met, but let allow me to reintroduce yourself. We got new things. Brown. Oh, that new thing does me be. I ain't never went on a roller coaster on a pier because I could end up in the water. We going to end up in the water. We're not, we but I'm just fine. saying. I'm doing stuff that I ain't never done. And that's what I'm doing that I ain't never done. And I'm doing stuff that I ain't really done. But I listen, I trust that God and I trust you that we're going to do it together. We're going to be like this. I trust that God is going to do it. <laughs> in you. Okay, Mariner's Pier. Let so, me, oh, yeah. we're, going to Mar- we're going to Mariner's Pier. Mm-hmm. Mariner's Pier. Hey, She's y'all. Come out and, the y'all come out to New Jersey and have a Probably. fun day with me and Destiny at the New Jersey Pier. That's what you want me to say. Come on, come on. If you ain't doing nothing, we don't be down there. We leave out in the a.m. I'm going to take the woman of God to a nice breakfast brunch, and then we're going to get our behinds on the road. But bring a jacket, y'all. Bring a jacket because by that water, it's nice, but it'd be a little chilly. So you better make sure you have a jacket because I ain't sharing mine. I'm just letting y'all know. I ain't, I ain't doing that either. I ain't, I ain't doing sharing that my either. jacket. So you Let come make out this here looking cute. Yeah, that's now, on you. But um, some of these stuff I'm looking at like yeah. the devil is a lie. Mm-mm. Okay. I ain't jumping out of none of this stuff. She said, Mm-mm. "Get get you a lobster roll and some Cajun fries. That sounds good." I can't do it. See, we gonna go on this destiny. 
you see, no, I, I was thinking a little bit smaller. No, uh, we doing that together, and we're gonna hold hands, and we're gonna scream, and we're gonna well, is cry. Way, do you see any way I could sit in the middle, and we can have like somebody we don't? No, uh, you're gonna sit on the side, and we're gonna. I don't want to sit on the side. See, did nobody? Th this is not because when I get on this plane to go to Texas, I'm gonna make sure that they give me a middle seat. I don't even want like window seat. <laughs> Y'all be done lost my phone trying to go live, and I. <laughs> You know them people that be like, this gonna be this gonna be destiny. <laughs> yes, you know I'm going. Ah, <laughs> oh, listen, listen, go to sleep. But we definitely I'm gonna get the woman of God to do some things. We gonna experience some things together. So if you're able to come out Saturday during the day, um, I definitely will let y'all know when we touch ground. So those that are gonna come out. Maybe we can have a location where we all meet, but we're going to ride. We're going to eat. We're going to have fun. We're going to trust God while we on these rides because good God almighty. We're going to have so much fun, y'all. Come. Y'all, me and Destiny going to have so much fun. And bring so, a Jackie, y'all. Bring a Jackie. So y'all listen, we got to go. Also, yes. if you want to book a life coaching session with me, go to my link tree. Everything's yes. there. We love y'all so much. Oh, y'all join the mentorship program. Yay, babe. Oh, that's yes. perfect. Because I'm about to go. Make sure you go join because I'm about to go send out the email. Okay. Uh, my, and she's uh, going to give y'all about it. Well, I don't know how much, how much time you're going to give them today to go get in a mentorship program. I'll give y'all about an hour. I got to get this email sent out. Okay. She's going to give y'all about an hour to get about into 30 the minutes. mentorship program. Oh, about 30 minutes to get yeah, into the mentorship to program. The link is in her bio. So y'all got 30 minutes to get into the to, to the um, mentorship program because that is tonight. And that's going to be epic because woman of God, you, I know you, you couldn't really see because the comments was going, but baby, we rich. God spoke oh, that yes. to me. We yes. is rich, honey. Because I kept saying, God, you got me in your word all day, every day. He said, my word is rich. I said, ooh. Also, my Facebook feed for two. If y'all want to get in my mentorship program, I'm yes. going to drop the link right now. Go get signed up, my Facebook people. Get in my mentorship program. Also, y'all, too, I announced this yesterday. I'm actually about to get ready pretty soon, y'all. Working on getting this done with Amazon. I'm trying to get it done today, y'all. But guess what, y'all? I am going to be actually launching my prayer journal. So yes. I'm so excited about it. But y'all, I am launching a prayer journal, which is gonna be on which is gonna be sold on Amazon. So y'all be on the lookout. Pretty soon I'm gonna be launching my prayer journal. And you're gonna be able to get that. It is gonna be a journal that is literally gonna teach you. You're gonna be able to go pray. You're gonna be able to journal. It has a prayer in the back, y'all. It's super duper beautiful. This is an epic thing we're launching. And so y'all just kind of get ready because God has so many things in store for us, y'all. So I love y'all. Y'all be love blessed. Y'all have guys. a great day. So Go get much. in the mentorship program. You got 30 minutes to get in this program. 30 minutes. Until I send out this email, okay? Okay, y'all. Bye. Bye.